the soccer kids for me. You gotta warn me when we're about to go back. <laughs> like to keep you on your toes. Didn't even get to eat my banana yet. <laughs> Jesus. Da. Man, it's so it's so, so early, early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, episode seventy nine. I had to t- take the bus here today. Yeah, because I broke my bicycle with, with all the other people that have regular jobs. Well, <laughs> I got on I got on the bus. I didn't realize like they're doing construction, so they moved the bus stop like a half a block. So yeah. I went. The bus was sitting there, so I ran. Well, before the light changed. Yeah, and I'm I'm like knocking like. She, the driver was ignoring me and then i, was, I started knocking Break. on the door like let me in and then she opened the door and she's like this isn't a stop you see the sign there can you read she's she's like tomorrow when you come here you go down there with everybody else I'm like Man, tomorrow i'm gonna be in bed at this time don't worry <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow i'm not, uh, not gonna be on the bus bitch. at 7 30 in the morning yeah <laughs> well, welcome everybody that's you know watching or may not be watching right now and uh, you know or is watching this later on or listening or listening uh we have a very very special program for y'all today oh. very special very very special we've been looking forward to this basically since we started doing <laughs> this podcast eh that's true we've yeah, mentioned this guy a few back. times we've yeah. mentioned him a few times yeah, yeah, yeah so for those that have been following us and and have been following this today we have uh we have a very special guest we've already announced this so it, it might not be much of a surprise for anybody but we have Lance Stroll. If you're tuning in, if you're tuning in right now for the Lance Stroll interview, uh, that won't be on till uh, you know, for another 20 minutes. He's 18, 18, 18 minutes, 18, 18 minutes, and in, in 18 minutes we'll go. Uh, we'll hook up a live link to uh, Geneva and, uh, and and talk to Lance. Uh, but until then, uh, just for the people that might not know, uh, let's just uh, do. Let's start with like do, do like a quick. Uh, a quick rundown of the guy and and, and and why and why would he why would he why would, why we would he want to talk to us yeah <laughs> yeah and why would we want to even talk to him for starters mm-hmm. most important he's canadian yes <laughs> yeah. sure that's why we got this interview <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gotta have something to do with it oh, yeah if yeah. it doesn't then what are we even doing here yeah <laughs> like honestly guys what are we doing here um, but yeah, no. So, uh, Lance Stroll, he is a look. Right now, he has been making a lot of headlines in the world of F one mm-hmm. because uh, it is rumored that he might be taking Felipe Massa's seat next year. Maybe, maybe, maybe rumor, not. Rumor, rumor. If just, just to the people that might have tuned in right now to find out whether or not he will be taking. Uh, the seed, like for sure. I gotta oh, yeah, tell you just, right now. Just turn off the show. Yeah, just turn off the show. We're no. not. He, we 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 talked to his manager. He, he's not even allowed to touch the subject of of F one or twenty seventeen or what can, his plans are. Can't even has. flirt with you. Yeah, yeah, can't even. So we're gonna respect that obviously, and and not ask him about that. That's right. We, we, there are some things that we can talk about, though, um, uh, for sure. I mean, the, 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 uh, with regards to that, uh, and I'll just like do a quick thing uh, right now, quick rundown. So right now, uh, he is the development driver at Williams, like well, the Williams F1. Okay, wait. let's start at the beginning here. So sure, this dude's 17 see. years old, 2008, started racing at nine, nine. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the the oh, one minute, the yeah. one minute rundown, the 60 second run down to his career 2008 won rookie of the year for the quebec federation of sport automobiles second year 2009 was driver of the year this thing according 2010 won four north american titles very like what various titles 2011 raced two series in europe 2012 raced six international series over 50 races 50 races 2013 Won best rookie in two series, moving into being a professional. 2014 started in Italian Formula Four, and that's Was basically when, when we started to follow him. We we follow him th- uh, yeah. throughout, and actually before that, he actually had a very successful campaign in the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand. Remember that? That uh, was 2015. Yeah. He was the champion. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and became fifth in the European Formula 3 in 2015, joined the Ferrari Driver Academy as the second youngest Formula 1 hired driver ever. No, not Formula 1, but... Well, a driver, driver yeah. in the Ferrari Academy. And in November of last year, left Ferrari. And then 2016 is this year now leading the European Formula 3 championship. Mm -hmm. 11 races to go. He's won nine of them. Mm -hmm. He's 68 or 66 or 68 points ahead of his teammate. Yeah. Destroyed. Yeah. And uh, out of 32 races of the season, too. He's killing it. Oh, I, okay. And, yeah, he's, de he's next, definitely killing it. And next I, I year will be in Massa seat as his career. Well, no, no, no. We can't say that. We can't say that he'll be in Massa seat next year. Well, this year. is a rumor. I'm not an official source or anything. Yeah. I don't work for <laughs> I, can, I can say whatever I want. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah. They're, 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 he the didn't rumors. tell me he'll be... Just to clarify, he didn't tell me he'll be working at Williams. So <laughs> nobody in F1 did. No. Uh, it, my own observation. Whether or not he'll be a Williams is all speculation right now. Nothing has been confirmed. I just want right. to like... Right. Go over that again. Uh, one thing that we can say, that we are allowed to say, is that he has been doing some simulator work extensively for Williams. That's as part of his position as a development driver. And part of his position in Formula 3. They actually reconfigured yeah. their racing simulator to Formula 3 specs and uh, threw in the court, the circuits that they race on to help them practice and kick ass. Yeah, so... No it's, code it's, masters. No. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. They're and, the real masters of coding, I think. Another thing that we can say is that he has been uh, he has been doing some time in an old F1 car, uh, specifically a 2014 car. Um, the FW36. Yeah, that the FW36. Um, so it, now we cannot comment on where these tests have happened or where they will happen, only we can say for sure that they are happening. This is a reality. He has been okay. in an F1 car, presumably, and, and you know, I mean, just the logical conclusion like of saying that is that he, he's been accumulating some uh, meaningful mileage in a car that will accrue towards his super license. Uh -huh, now, okay. Uh, if, Can he already get that though? No, 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 no. He can't oh. get that yet. He's not, he's not 18. 18. And well, he, he's got his miles down. Yeah, you have he, to have like mileage. So 300 kilometers, I believe. In in some sort of an F1 car, mm -hmm. uh, you also have to have uh, enough points in one of the feeder series. Which, if he wins the championship this year of mm -hmm. Formula Three, he will have them. Right. He will have enough points, and then he has to turn 18. Now. Okay. If all of this goes on, now his his birthday, like he, he's turning eighteen at the end of next month, yep. like right before Halloween, uh, and it by then, like it, so he he's going into this weekend to race in Imola. So th there's uh, three uh, Formula Three races happening in Imola this weekend, and um, he, it could be very well be that by the end of the weekend he would have see, uh, like he could have accumulated enough points to be the championship lead, or like the champion period. Uh, mathematically so, mathematically speaking. Yeah. His teammate can't catch up. <laughs> no, no. And and actually, like uh, going back to his campaign in Formula 3 right now, it has been... So he started the year with a somewhat of a lackluster season last year. So last year, he was in Formula 3. He was a rookie in Formula 3. Uh, but let's just say that other rookies maybe shined a little brighter than he did he including, pulled off a fifth anyway including his teammate now that he's beating uh maximilian gunther um i think max gunther got even higher position like a, a couple more wins than he did yeah. actually he only got he came into this year to formula three with only one win mm -hmm. um in formula three last year and now he's killing it he's he is like it would be silly not to call it a domination of the championship yeah he's absolutely killing it yeah we've we've heard the old canada up the step uh, top step of the podium in formula three quite a few times this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and it's been some fantastic racing formula three for those that are not familiar with um yeah <laughs> it is it's it's um it's a series where max verstappen came from okay uh esteban ocon won formula three and like that's basically like what made his name okay. there's been like quite lewis hamilton raced very successful in formula three vettel was in formula three um we've had a, a a championship that in in the absence like like you explained the other day in the absence of uh four of a recognized fia formula two 
this is it's, it's kind of becoming now like one of like the the next best things you know alongside i guess with gp2 and some other series um but one of the things that this that f3 has that i guess makes it f1 relevant uh is that it's very qualifying heavy you have to be fucking quick because and because they only get like a 20 minute qualifying session like all balls out like whoever sets the fastest lap as you're gonna get taken out by all the other kids on the grid and, at the start. that's the thing and, and let and, those guys crash behind you because there's so many cars and like so yeah. many inexperienced drivers so like, many 15 year olds driving them yeah that's it that if you're like if you put yourself in a position where you're at the back of the grid or like medium like mid to back of the grid mm -hmm. you're yeah you're gonna run into a situation where you're gonna be in an accident you're or get swallowed yeah or you or it's just gonna be way too many motherfuckers to go like to climb up yeah. right so qualifying is is key and because it's only a 20 minute qualifying session and there's like i don't know 30 cars <sighs> there's like a lot of traffic so you have yeah. to be good like you have to learn how to like do that it teaches you a lot of like transferable skills to f1 right, racecraft okay. is similar um they have like their steering wheel is like it's a pretty complicated there's actually a, a good video uh that i guess maybe we'll post in the comments uh later on of lance actually going through his uh his f3 steering wheel and it's mm -hmm. like i mean it's not it's not f1 but it's got like it's got an led screen with like five pages of settings that, like he can like yeah but my, you know my last bicycle i had uh, had an LED screen on it, so. <laughs> For <It's>, what? <laughs> I was just like a little like odometer, speedometer oh, thing. Oh, cool. All right. Never mind. That is <laughs> cool. I just got it. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, in 10 minutes, uh, we'll be, well, in, in nine minutes, eight minutes now, uh, we'll be uh, contact him, contacting him, uh, contacting Lance. Because uh, we have we have to stick to our allotted time. <laughs> right. Williams though very secretive about this whole Lance Stroll thing. His they don't, testing. They don't want to announce anything. Uh, they have officially announced that he's started his test program with them. Mm -hmm. He's doing twenty days. Nice. In the in the in the Frank Williams thirty six. Twenty days. Now it, this if is pretty incredible. We're not saying <laughs> that he that he will make it to F one next year, but if he does make it to F one this uh, next year, it's gonna be very exciting for well for, for many many reasons. You know, I don't even know if I've ever played the Formula One video game twenty times. <laughs> Never mind twenty days of being strapped in a F one car. Oh, it's oh my god. There's no doubt that this is like it's it's very hard. Like it's hard work, mm -hmm. and and the fact that we're doing the podcast like at this time like reflects like how how tight his schedule is mm -hmm. like we really like they, they they could only fit us at this time and that's mm -hmm. uh, uh and that's why we had to like you know wake up early and be here early mm -hmm. but um but yeah he's he's a busy guy and he's about to get busier if everything goes well i'd like to think that he will be uh, no doubt in a car yeah. and an f1 car next year yeah and uh you know we can only hope and he would join the roster of these this new guard that's entering f1 mm -hmm. bringing like lots of talent lots of like just maybe new ways of doing things that uh and and, and youth right like and younger yeah, yeah yeah reinvigorating the sport i think i yeah. think i think it's it's it can only be good for f1 yeah i think that's oh. a very global thing too like the, the these young kids like getting like insanely good i'm not sure if you guys were it's following very uh, young olympians and, and uh, the 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 hockey tournament that's going on right now. Um, there was a no. North, North American team filled with everyone under 23, I believe. And these guys are fast. Like, you, <laughs> like I, like you, they're incredible, mm -hmm. incredibly fast. You're just like, how, how, how? Yeah. Well, man, <laughs> you're it, like 19, man. Like, Jesus. <laughs> it, it, watching that document or like looking at that documentary that came out recently, uh, uh, Brundle versus Senna. And it's basically about their, the year that they spent together in, formula three they were like by then they were men like yeah. they were like grown-ass yeah. men but right now we're we're, we're seeing like an influx <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're seeing an influx of talent into the sport that like these these kids are starting very very young from a very young age that whereas that wasn't the case before that didn't really used to happen but we're having like young talent people that grew in the sport and have have had uh the advantage of like of you know what i mean of focusing all their energy and all their strength it's into honing yeah. that those skills mm -hmm. which is and, and it is reflecting in things like you know max verstappen now like being lauded as like you know the the, the next best thing because it changed again the age the minimum age rules were changed because of him yeah otherwise lance Stroll might have been racing already it could have been stupid yeah. 
Bottas. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Max, stupid Max. <laughs> oh, Bottas, too. You wonder with his TV, his little TV show that he launched online yesterday, if he's just trying to get a quick leg up on Stroll. Maybe. Just to like establish himself as like, let everyone know who he is. Watch him. That's where, that's, I don't know. It kind of sucks. It's a, a minute and 30 seconds, the first episode. Yeah, can, can, it's not an episode. It's like, yeah, not, it's, it's not even a commercial. It's, <laughs> it's not even it's like, a trailer. It's like, a, yeah. yeah. Some some TV shows, the opening credits are a minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for sure, yeah. So Lance would is potentially, at one point, you know, let, let's not say next year. Let's say at some point in the near future, he he will join the ranks or he might join the ranks um of the f1 drivers that's gonna be very exciting because it's gonna be okay you know we're gonna have a canadian f1 and f1 <laughs> so it's gonna be good uh another representative from north america really which is yeah. mm-hmm. like we, we've seen a lots of influx of people to f1 now from asia and europe the traditional uh markets but north america it we really had like a thing like where like rossi may have been like the next north american app to go to to f1 but now with his indy 500 victory He's probably staying in the states because uh, that's like he has more more of a clout more fans over there. and yeah you'll just yeah. see him make more money get more sponsorship yeah. get more recognition. I don't see him going to F one anytime soon. Yeah, and like why would he right? Like he'd, he'd probably be like going joining a, a subpar team like Manor and. There's a way bigger chance that one of those teams would want to hire him back, but mm-hmm. there's like you said a way bigger chance that he wouldn't want to come back. So yeah, it's not gonna happen. Hey, and, and all probably. the power to him. But yeah, good for him, man. He won the Indy 500. Yeah, Jeez. that's not, not not just anybody does it. Uh, but Lance, for sure, he's it, you can see that he's been tailoring his career to to end up where he is right now, which is in a position sure. that he can look forward to his next step, either his next step or next few steps to be Formula One. Mm. And there is no doubt in anybody's mind, not even his own, judging by some interviews, uh, <laughs> yeah. that. The fact that he's got solid financial backing played a part, mm-hmm. but it, if this, if anything, this year for him talent. has proven that yes, that he can also put his money where his mouth is or whatever, right? Like he can, he he has a put talent. His talent he, where his money is. Yeah, he 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 can definitely let his driving do the talking. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, rewatching some of the highlights from. Um, uh, from his F3, uh, or, or like from the uh, F3 championship this year, and he's had some fantastic fights, uh, w- like with his teammates, with other uh, drivers. Like, yeah, this kid. I mean, there's. L- let's be honest. If he ends up in F1, it won't be just for the money alone. Mm. Um, and and and, and th- I'm sure we'll we're gonna find out more uh, now in a couple of minutes. One. So, yeah, so we're gonna give him a call. Uh, yeah, it, it just like a, yeah. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna start uh, trying to dial out? So, Mike, let's open up a link direct to Geneva. Oh, sorry guys, it's gonna be a awkward silence here for a second. Yeah, just on. just while the, uh, the the phone rings. <laughs> so is it? Having some problems, boys. Get, getting some difficulties oh. going. Oh, it's all good. It's all uh, good. Uh. Stay tuned. Boop, 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 boop. But yeah, Lance, it, it just seems to me like um, he's grown a lot, definitely, from, from, from where his position was last year. And that's what everybody can say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's clear. Oh, there we go. Here we go. It's ringing. It's ringing. Hello. 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 Lance Stroll. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Javier from uh, Flat Out Fever. Flat Out Fever. Okay, yes, please. Oh, just hold on one second. Take your Thank time. You. Thank you. Yeah, that might have not been Lance. <laughs> that was Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- we are calling like a landline, by the way, for our listeners. <laughs> Hello, Lance Stroll. Yes. 
That's you, me speaking. You are live on the internet right now. How are you, Lance? Am I really? Yeah. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> uh, Lance, this is uh, Javier from Flat Out Fever. Um, okay. This is Danny here. How are you? Yeah, uh, I'm Mike. How All right. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, it's it pleasure, going, pleasure to finally talk to you. Uh, we've been trying to line this interview for a while, and uh, honestly, thank you so much for fitting us in your what must be a very, very busy schedule now ahead of uh, ahead of Imola. Um, how are you? Yeah. Fe how are you feeling? How's how's uh, how, how's stuff going? Are you are you pumped to to possibly grab the championship this weekend? I definitely am pumped. Um, you know, it's it's going to be in the back of my mind. Uh, you know, all weekend. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, it's another weekend, just like uh, all the others, and I'm gonna need to be focused on uh, on the job uh, at hand, and I'm gonna have to take it race by race and uh, try and uh, try and you know maximize uh, maximize the points I can, like every other weekend. Yeah, but let's 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 be honest. I mean, the, the, it, Max Gunther is is the next one up, and there's no way that he's that he's catching you at this point. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But uh, we have seen that, uh, you know, motorsport. Uh, we all know that many things can happen, and uh, oh, yeah. it's uh, it's never done till it's done. So I'd rather be on the focus side and uh, than than on the uh, than on the relaxed side. So um, yeah, no. But it's it's we're definitely we're definitely in a healthy position. Oh, you yeah. know, we we have a good points lead, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's coming to the end of the championship. So yeah, never mind um, just the championship. Know, last, last big push. Take it with a dominance. Yeah, leave, leave no question. <laughs> and and it has yeah, been. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Sorry, it, it has been a bit of a dominant year for me. Uh, for you, uh, I, I was I was just we were just saying we did a little short introduction before you we, we went uh, live with you right now, and um, we were saying how you started this year with just a single win to your name in F three, and fast forward the clock to now and. It's just been we've we've heard the O Canada at the top step of the podium more times <laughs> than than ever before. Yeah. It's like I'm yeah, back I in mean, elementary for, school. For sure, it's it's been it's been a really strong season for me. Um, you know, I think, uh, but it's it's a combination of of everyone. You know, and all the work that w that we did over the winter. You know, I with my engineers and with my you know getting closer to to my whole team and and I just you know I had a lot of confidence coming coming out of uh, out of last season with with that one win at the at the end of the championship last year and you know just just coming into this year I knew that uh, the the speed was there and then it was just about putting all the little details together and uh, and with the experience I had from last year mm -hmm. we um yeah we we definitely made it work up to now so it's it's been really good I want to go out on a limb here and say that there is one name that probably had to do a lot in uh, in in your recent success and uh, and that is uh, Luca Baldisseri. Uh, he, you're you're mate from back in the Ferrari Driver Academy. Yep. You brought him over or you know he he went over uh now he's a prema with you uh kind of coaching you. What uh what what, what kind of influence has he had uh on your on your recent success? Yeah, Luca's had a a huge influence on my success. I think he's you know he's really the one who mentored me um you know even from karting and in formula 4 then last year in formula 3 and bringing me to to the level I am today in formula 3 it's it's you know a big a big part of the job has has been him and you know he's he's seen so many drivers uh you know come up the ranks in in the past and he's worked with so many great drivers and he just he knows the you know what it takes to to really be successful and um he's he's helped me a tremendous amount uh, over the years and uh, but but it, you know it's it's not only him it, it takes a, you know a team of people my engineer uh you know my coach uh, all, all these all these people have have you know have really helped me reach uh the level i am today so i have to thank all of them equally so m moving to the next level we saw in the last uh, couple of weeks you've fulfilled all your requirements for your super license application not yet What's the final requirement? He's got to be the 18. birthday. The birthday. <laughs> so aside from the birthday, yeah. Um, what are the final steps? What is the like the final like the application look like? Like, what is the when you do you have to go to the FIA yourself and is there, any, is there uh, anything like that? Or yeah, I'm, I'm just, not. I'm not really too is sure. Is just a formality? Uh, you know what, what we have to do for that. But I think um, most important thing is is that we have the points now for it. Yeah. So um, and, you know, winning Formula Four and finishing fifth last year in Formula Three and 
um, and you know now guaranteed uh, a top three in in Formula Three this season has gave me the points, uh, the 40 points required for the super license. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, that's that's the important part, um, and you know. Uh, the other details I haven't yet discussed with uh, <laughs> with everyone, um, but um, yeah, no. What matters is the points, and then uh, yeah, you know, we'll, from we'll take it from there. A little bit more difficult than in the uh, the Gran Turismo video game, although. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Gran. To be honest, Gran Turismo could get hard at times. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, talking about that, like how. How would you compare the Williams simulator to like a like a normal like PS4 game? Like I'm yeah, sure it's going to be leaps and bounds but just like cuz this is a question that keeps coming up like fans like don't quite grasp that it's like it's a completely different experience. Yeah, I mean for sure it's you know it's as close to reality as as we can get today. Um but it's it's still a simulator and there's still a screen and it's not you know it's not like you're you're on the track. Um, driving a real car, so you don't get the wind um, and tire sure, bits in your for face. For sure, I mean, you know, the, they they've got it, they've got everything um, needed to make it as close to reality as possible. You know, motion platforms and you know um, the best project projectors out there with the best screen and to make the graphics look to to to, to almost perfection. So it's for sure, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of money put into it, and there's um, you know there's a lot of people working to to make that simulator as close to the real car as possible but you know at the same time it's you, you, you can't treat it uh like reality you know there's there's always differences so of course it's it's uh it's a bit better than the than the Gran Turismo with the the you know <laughs> with the uh with the PlayStation remote but uh, <laughs> at the same time you know it is it is uh it, it is still sort of a game in my eyes and I don't like to treat it you know um to to the same level of reality because there's you just can't compare the two. Luckily, you've got some reality testing lockdown as well. Yeah. How's 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 the jump from from your Prema F3 car to the FW36? Like it must like it's I I can't even imagine like it's it's got to be like a, a, two different worlds or or I don't know is there is there are they similar in any way? It's like when I upgraded from my Honda Civic to my Honda Accord. I think they are more similar than than what people think. I mean, you know, for sure, Formula One, uh, in terms of power and you know downforce, it's it's the most impressive machine in the world. You know, it's it's basically a rocket ship on on wheels. So it's <laughs> in in that sense for sure, it's it's a big jump from F3. But at the same time, you know, F3 is a, is already a really high level, and uh, you know, the yeah. car has a lot of downforce. There's a lot of grip. Um, the power is not so uh, so big compared to F1, but but the car is 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 already really good in F3. So um, of course, the, the the jump is big, but it's it's it, surprisingly um, it's it's very manageable, and um, and I think that you know um, over over. Uh, you know, a few laps or a few days, I, 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 um, I'll, I'll be able to get in the rhythm pretty quick. That's cool. That's cool, man. Um, it, it, how about on the team side? Like, I'm, I'm sure it, it must also be like a completely different game going from Prema and then dealing with, with, with a team the size of Williams. And, and and everything that is like do you get the same the same feeling because I, I i was watching a couple of uh of your videos uh where you go around the prema uh garage and like show their little coffee maker and how that's apparently what runs the team and all that uh <laughs> is, is is there the same kind of like family atmosphere somewhere like williams i think uh i think it is um you know i, I think prema is, is already very professional as a team uh even you know in f3 gp2 they they work at the standard of, of formula one teams in my opinion and that's part of that's part of the reason why they're so successful about to become um, world champions in, in all the different categories but but of course williams you know they're they're, they're a formula one team um i think the level of professionalism in prema is, is just as high i think the big difference is that there are just a lot more people in Formula One and there's a lot more engineers and a lot more people to speak to throughout the weekends and throughout the tests and there's there's a lot more going on. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's it's like anything, you know, it's it's very similar in, in many ways, but, but there are there are differences and, you know, I'm I'm gonna need to learn how to, to work with a new team and work with new people because of course it's 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 not exactly the same. Yeah, I guess. So, look, looking looking to next year, I guess. Well, we can't really but, talk about next year. 
Well, <laughs> not himself. We can talk about next year, but the, the Formula One calendar, just the calendar in general, was announced a day or two ago. And Brazil and Canada were announced as uh, provisionally on the calendar because of... Uh, because of money, some kind of uh, Bernie, Bernie, there's, Bernie, Bernie manipulation. There's talk that the Canadian Grand Prix might not make a comeback next year. I mean, I, I went on the website, uh, yeah. and they're still not selling, not selling tickets. tickets yet. Is that is that something that really? that you'd see as? Yeah, they're not selling. Before last year, they'd sell you tickets like the day after the previous Grand Prix, but now yeah, Monday morning yeah, you got emails. They're not I'm selling coming. tickets yet. I think that they're that. The rumors, I mean, there's there's got to be something to that that we might not see the comeback of the Canadian Grand Prix or like maybe take a, maybe it taking another like a year's break. Is that something that like worries you? Like how, like how do you feel that like from the point of view as a Canadian racing driver? I was thinking also with with your I, with I your actually, new clout. I, I actually had no I had no idea about that before before you guys just told me. So wow. um, that's that's really that's really bad to hear. But um, yeah. I I really just hope it works out because you know uh, me being Canadian, I think it'd be really unfortunate really sad to you know not not be be able to to have a canadian grand prix i think uh i think it would uh it would definitely not be good for the sport absolutely i was just gonna say being canadian and with your new clout maybe you could get in, in contact with your local mp <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, uh, hopefully maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, write a I'll letter or something an angry email honest, I, I have i have quite a bit on my hands at the moment but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know um, wait until you're yeah, world I'll, champion I'll make a phone call or two hopefully i'll be able to convince them <laughs> For, no, for sure, man. Uh, Call him on Monday. Speaking of being Canadian, <laughs> yeah. well, now now you're you're in Geneva right now, and I, I, that makes sense. You gotta be, but you gotta be pretty much like based in Europe when you're when you're going up the ranks of motorsport. But I got a question for you: Is there any good poutine in Geneva? Unfortunately, there isn't. You know, that's actually a big problem we have living in Geneva. Um, there, there's not a, there, there's not any poutine, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, it's it's a good life in Geneva. Um, other than the poutine, which is uh, which is a disappointment, um, it's it's really good being based there. You know, there's uh, there's great skiing. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a lake, so in the summer, it's, it's really cool. You know, go go out on the boats and and have a good time with some friends. So it's it's a great place uh, to be based. Well, I was gonna say, just maybe maybe make you feel a little better. I had some Toronto poutine yesterday, and it was garbage. <laughs> oh yeah, no, definitely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go for a Toronto poutine. Gotta, no, gotta no. have it in, in Quebec. In know, my, that's the only way. One of my first and my last. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Uh, it it just okay. It, uh, I we also wanted to touch now on like you as a person. It does seem like a, a lot of interest from uh, from our listeners, from our from our audience, seems to be that now that your name has been coming up a lot. Uh, in the F1 circles uh, and, you know, w w the relationship with Williams and what may or may not happen next year. A, a lot of people just seem, seem to be interested about, about you uh, and, 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 and how, like, uh, like what, what your approach uh, uh, to, to the F1 lifestyle might be if you get there or not. Uh, but I, what I really want to know is um, how, like, like, have you gotten to drive your dad's LaFerrari? <laughs> uh the last ride actually you know what i was lucky enough i i actually did but it wasn't it actually wasn't my dad um i i got to drive it at fiorano um I got, oh no there way was, there oh, was wow. a, i think it was yes yeah, it, it was before the car was out um they were testing it at ferrari oh and uh <laughs> and i was there that day and and yeah i was lucky enough to to get a couple laps in, how is so, that beast did you um, like did you pedal to the metal yeah, I know it, it was pretty impressive at the time. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, so I was I was still pretty young. Um, but uh, I I definitely was pedal to the metal. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a life experience. So which, which was your favorite, like like to drive of your dad's cars? I haven't. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm actually uh, I'm not I'm not driving them very often. Um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 really his toys. They're not mine. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I I'm busy. I'm busy enough driving my Formula Three car for the moment. Yeah, oh, absolutely. One, one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm sure your dad wants to drive that too. So <laughs> it goes both. Yeah, ways. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, but for sure, your, your calendar must be like uh, very, very full, very packed, and 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 that is one thing that uh, we've we've talked to previous drivers. Uh, actually, we talked to uh, Tatiana Calderon uh, back when she was in F F3 with you. And just describing her her workout routine and and it, like it's it's crazy. You guys are basically like you, you're either working out or or just doing media stuff or just running around all the time. Like where do you 
where do you have time for like you know friends girlfriends school and all that yeah i think it, it's definitely a hectic life you know being on the road and and um you know, racing a lot. It's 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 a unique lifestyle. It's not it's not the same as you know going to school and just kind of taking it easy. But but it, it it's it's what I love to do. So at the same time, it's it's hectic, but I'm I'm really enjoying it. And uh, and yeah, when it comes to friends and you know uh, girlfriends and all, all these things, you know, life itself. I think it's all about having having a balance. I think that's really important. It's you know there's other things to life. And just racing and you know working out and, and all these things so it's it's important to have that that balance and you know it's important to to have the the racing side of it um covered and but at the same time it's, it's you know it's important to disconnect from time to time and really you know enjoy just just being being a kid and uh and you know hanging out with friends and uh having a good laugh so it's uh, it's all about a balance speaking of that uh being a kid there we got a clip of you on the podium here yeah okay Th this is this is i think it was like the second or third race at po earlier this year where and and i just okay. i this was i i was laughing out loud because it shows you taking a <laughs> sip of whatever that thing is that they handed you on the podium oh, and you're yeah, like yeah, and you're yeah, like you're like what is this race. crap and dumped <laughs> yeah. it all out what was that <laughs> Being a kid, yeah, being no, I was just, uh, you know what, I was disappointed because, like, you know, being a kid, it is one of the only times I'm allowed to, you know, sit in champagne. That's what I was gonna say. So was it non alcoholic? Now, shit? You know, I worked my butt off, I'm on the podium, and they're not giving me champagne. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah. so, so, um, was it some so, just non alcoholic no, I, I juice? Was bit, I was a bit, uh, I, I was a bit disappointed, I must say. So, I, uh, like, yeah, no, I wasn't too happy about that. Carbonated grape juice. <laughs> Yeah, they, that that looked just, like it didn't taste very good anyway. <laughs> no, it was like some sort of apple cider from Poe or whatever. So, it, no, it wasn't amazing. <laughs> In the other races, though, they do give you like a proper like Henkel drink or something like that. This, this German yeah, they give you like a, a big a big bottle of, of champagne of Henkel. So, it's, it's fun to spray and, you know, have a sip or two but, uh, at race three. Not race one or two because you still got to focus on the race three. To drive I'll, after. I'll tend to have a couple of sips, which is, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> well that, that that's pretty cool um maybe maybe it would taste better in shoey form yeah maybe <laughs> i don't know about that you know I was, I, i'm not too sure i think that's that's crossing the line of it but, uh, yeah that, that that kind of got to my stomach to be honest I'm not a big fan. oh you've tried it <laughs> No, the shoey. I didn't try it. Just watching it on the TV, like, uh, we, it wasn't for me. Oh yeah, we got, we got, we got. Well, the, the Australians got the shoey. We gotta, we gotta get our heads together and think of something Canadian yeah, to do. Maybe you could drink morning. out of your hat, yeah, maybe or something. Definitely not along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> your hat. Use your hat. Along the lines of taking your shoe off. <laughs> they give you a brand new fresh hat when you win the race. Yeah. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, what there's. Uh, you so you 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 spend some time you're you're friends with Esteban Ocon right or like you 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 have some sort of you, you talked to, to yeah. Esteban right yeah he, he's an F1 right now and one of the first things that they that they've been doing I don't know if you're familiar with with this uh, the Sky broadcast the, the Sky broadcast the, the British Sky um, Ted's, Ted's bumbling yeah, no, around I am. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do, yeah do you do you know who Ted Kravitz is. Yes, I do. Okay, yes, so yeah, Ted wandering one, around, bothering everyone. Yeah, one of the things that he likes to do is that when when a new rookie comes into F one, uh, he goes and asks him this series of questions. Uh, it's like a rapid fire, like you know, round robin questions, like uh, to see like kind of what like what what your personality is. And let me tell you, Esteban Ocon, like he 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 kind of didn't do so well. And because we want really? you to succeed, we're going to prepare you right now. So let's do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like yeah, it. I yeah. like it. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. Apologies to Mr. Kravitz. <laughs> yeah, no, Ted, yeah, Ted. We're not we're not dampening on your parade here. We just want to prepare our boys. So, all right, Lance. If he, if he ever asks you these, don't tell, tell him about me, this. Tell me. Shoot, yeah. shoot. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, what is your best dish that you can cook? Uh, spaghetti parmigiano. Nice. Very good. Nah, that's tasty. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Uh. Uh, snakes, not my thing. Not oh my thing. yeah, very scary. Uh, yeah. What makes you grumpy? What makes you grumpy? Uh, bad organization. Ah, oh, that's uh, <laughs> that that works. Uh, what is a, something not to ask a girl on the first date? Not to ask a girl on the first date. Um, 
I don't know. You know, normally I write, I ask the right questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the right answer. Not to, um, not to ask a girl on the first date. Um, you like cheese. Do you like cheese? <laughs> like cheese. Just stay away from it. You know? Stay away from it. Just stay away from it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, what is the last music album you downloaded or bought or streamed? Um, to be honest, I'm not big on music albums. Uh, I just really go song by song. Um, you know, what are you listening days, to these uh, days? Though? I'm, these days, I really dig. Uh, I really dig Drake, so I'm listening to a lot of Drake. Nice. I think it's, you know, it's a good mix of R and B and like a, you know, the six. Some, some soft rap. So I, You're being yeah, patriotic, so like basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is patriotic <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, I listen to to a lot of kind of dance, mellow, um, good vibes. Uh, music, you know, uh, Robin Schultz, kind of Calvin Harris, so that kind of stuff. Oh, right um, and you know, I also like listening to some really like mellow, um, just relaxing, like Ed Sheeran sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it just depends the moment. So cool, great. What would be yeah. your superhero power? Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Ooh. Iron Man. It's an iron just, suit. Yeah, because I like. Well, it's not really a power. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. So. Uh, if I had to pick a power, it would be, I think, Hulk. <laughs> oh, okay. get really angry and tear it down? Nice. Oh, you're not going to fit yeah, in the FW39, though. I would like to like, jump and destroy buildings. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fit in the FW39. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to get your legs in there. <laughs> What's your best karaoke song? My best karaoke song? is um well actually the one and only karaoke song i sang with my best friend when we were about like 10 years old was um was begging like you know that that song i forget by who it's by exactly but i'll tell you right now i have it on my phone <laughs> give me like five seconds it is by it's, it's like uh it's, yeah, it's a good it's a little beat uh hold up a second So it's by um, Madcon, Begging oh. by Madcon. Nice. Okay, yeah. I sang that in the Caribbean <laughs> karaoke night with my best friend. We were about like 10 or 11 years old, and it was, it was, it was so funny. I still remember it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I just wrote it down. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boxers yeah. or briefs? Or fireproof underwear? Um, boxers, boxers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit Un of a weird question. Under the fireproof underwear? <laughs> Yeah, under the fireproof under. Well, we're not actually allowed, so uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Daily basis. Make sure they're not polyester. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, definitely. My dad, my dad's friend as a kid did a blue angel, and uh, <laughs> you got some. You had to go to the hospital. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, not good. What's your most annoying habit? My most annoying habit is probably the urge to eat chocolate. Mm. I, that kind of uh, that kind of yeah. ties with with the next yeah. question. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. What is your biggest indulgence? Is it chocolate? <laughs> chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate. Oh man! And you live in Switzerland, so you're like you basically live in the diet, land of chocolate. I, 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 unfortunately, it's not part of my diet, but I must say it is my my guilty pleasure. <laughs> In the world capital of chocolate right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not exactly how. <laughs> how would your friends describe you? Um, I think calm, um, and you know, um, focused. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that's a good question. You know what? I think. I think competitive. Competitive oh. is is. Is definitely a part of me, um, but at the same time, um, very calm. Nice. Yeah, calm and competitive. Uh, I uh, like that. Calm, and competitive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works. A, 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 a works. calm, com a calm and competitive Canadian sounds good to me. <laughs> now, now, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Put it together. I like it. <laughs> and the last question, which is where where Ocon kind of fumbled. What is three cubed? 
27, right? There you go. Oh. Boom. Oh, oh Canada. Canada. Right? Brilliant. Yes, it is. You I got did, it right. You know, I, I, did, I did finish high school. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's, got it's, another thing. Yeah. I, I think Ocon, like, to, to, to his credit, he just got a little nervous. Uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah. there you go. So there, you are. So, yeah, it, happens, it happens to all of us. Yeah, you got, uh, absolutely. You got Ted and a 30-pound camera in your face. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. we talked to Martin, your uh, your manager there, uh, we kind of said that we were only going to be uh, going for like a 10, 15 minute interview. We're, we've gone way past that. Uh, but that's all right. but yeah, hopefully that's okay. If uh, like no, I don't know. it was good. I I had a kick, so it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> that, like awesome. uh, yeah, all right, man. Uh, I, I actually I have a couple more questions. If you still have, do you still have time? Is it is it still cool? Like yeah, right? no, no, no rush at all. Yeah, far away. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Vettel versus Alonso versus Hamilton. Who wins in the same car? That's tricky. Um, Just... I'll have to say Alonso. Yes. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, but not, but, but to be honest, it's 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 really hard to say. Um, being a racing driver, um, I know how you know how difficult it is um, to be to be really really good, and I think that they're all really really good. So I have. Tremendous amount of respect for all of them. They're all champions. Um, I'm just saying Alonso because I like Alonso. So, uh, <laughs> but but to, to be honest, I think they're all um, exceptional, and they're all um, you know top drivers. So uh, so I think it's it's more on on any given day than than, than anything else. So I got a question just before this interview. Like when we did a little intro, we just did a quick overview of your career going back to 08. So just just in there, like what would you say is like the real turning point of your career where you realize like, yeah, I'm going to be a racer. Like, I think I can get to F1. This is what I'm doing with my life. Like where in there? Yeah, I, I think, I think it was, I think it was around 2011, uh, when I signed with Ferrari or 2010, sorry, 2010 when I signed with Ferrari. Oh wow. Um, at, uh, wow, at age 11. 11 years old. And, uh, that, you know, that was when I moved to Europe and that was when I, you know, started competing, uh, in, in karting internationally. Mm-hmm. And I knew from there, kind of, okay, that's you know, this is this is what I want to do, and I'm I'm gonna give it my all. So, um, yeah, that was that was the moment where uh, where I knew like uh, I'm 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 going for it. So yeah. In 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 your many interviews, um, like one one of the themes that seems to come up. Uh, that I've noticed is that um, your your family, and clearly, like it's uh, it's something that 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 is very dear to you. That that, that you're very. Uh, uh, that you that you claim that it's it's influenced you a lot, and and I know that your uh, your dad would follow you around. Like when we started this podcast, I think <clears throat> you were like in the middle of the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand, and uh, and, and I guess uh, your dad went to all the races with you in a big RV and all that. Um, that is definitely yeah. something that like I'm I'm sure you can appreciate that not all drivers out there, uh, you know, even have the opportunity. Uh, to get and, and it's something that I'm sure that you feel very lucky and very grateful for. Um, it is something that also the media seems to have been catching a lot of wind of and and and, and kind of referencing back. And there is some talk uh, among some of the more speculative media is saying that you know if if you go to F1, you'd be just another pay driver. What would you say to those people? Um, yeah, well, first of all, um, I want to address, um, you know, the, the fact that, that I do come from, from a wealthy family Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that let's face the fact that that's them. So, um, I can't do anything about that. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think it's, nobody asked to be born. It's just part of life. Um, but I think that I've proven myself, um, in racing. I think money is, you know, it definitely, it definitely gets, you know, it, it got me to, to where I am today in the sense of, you know, giving me the opportunity to, to race. But I think it, it gives you the opportunity. And, you know, if, if you, if you want to just take the opportunity and, you know, be bad and not win and be slow, well, you can do that with money, of course, but <laughs> to, to really win, I like, mean, that's, that's not, you know, my, my father isn't driving the car for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing it myself. So, um, I think it, it gives me the opportunity, but on the other hand, um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely, it's a sport that you need money. Like, you know, you, you can't change that. Um, you know, there's plenty of incredibly talented drivers who just, you know, didn't have the opportunity to do it. And I think that's really unfortunate because sports, you know, I, I don't think it should be like that. I think you should, 
you know, if, you, if you're good, you should be able to compete and it shouldn't come down to money. Mm-hmm. But I've, you know, I've, I've won, I've won championships. I've won races. I have proven, you know, to, 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 to be a good driver. And I, I, I can't do more than that. So I, I, I just feel sorry for the people who, who, who just, you know, look at money and, and who, who, who just, you know, think that's, that's the, the easy way to, to describe me, you know, as, as a paid driver. I think, uh, I think there's more to it than that. And, um, and yeah, I mean, the, the, I can't say much more than that. I just, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I'm, I'm going out and competing and trying as hard as I can, like any other driver. And the fact that I have money, sure. Maybe, you know, I sleep in a more comfortable bed, uh, you know, in the, in the hotel, but other than that, it's, uh, it's completely irrelevant with, with, you know, winning races. It just, you know, you know it, it gets you a hotel room and it gets you to travel around the, around the world and go to the races where it needs to go. But, you know, me on track winning those races, that's, that's not money at all. You know, you, know, you know what else I would add to that? Yeah, tell me. Senna was a paid driver at one point. <laughs> yeah, true. true. <laughs> I, think, I think almost everyone was. Uh, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's Formula One today. Yeah, and, it's, it's, it, yeah um, it is, it is know, what it I is. I think you don't, get, you don't get your, you know, whether it comes from, from uh, you know, your family, whether it comes from a sponsor, money needs to come from somewhere in, yeah. in today's Formula One world. So, um, you know, I... I all I can do is is go go out there and and you know try as hard as I can. Yeah. Let your um, driving do the talking, man. That's that I it. I don't think there's any, any doubt. You've talking proven talking them all wrong already. No, other than that, it's, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Talking on the track. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely. Now, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, uh, one thing that I that I want to say. I mean, and this is just like uh, personal. If if there is a Canadian Grand Prix next year which yeah. I mean, there most likely will be but still yeah. there will if, be let's think positive yeah, there, will yeah. be. <laughs> there will be uh <laughs> it, so yeah so there's gonna be a canadian uh, grand prix next year 2017 yeah. montreal there's gonna be uh, a, there's gonna be a double e pre so formula one can't be updone by formula e that's Come true on. <laughs> uh so yeah, next no, year <laughs> next year early june there's gonna be a canadian grand prix we're gonna be in montreal let's say you're gonna be in montreal <laughs> why don't we go for a drink bud yeah. Absolutely, yeah, no, but but you're you're buying, huh? You're yeah, buying. yeah, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, actually, uh, before we let you go, I do want to say, uh, no, that for sure, man, you you do have. Uh, like you're making us very proud. I'm sure that um, more people out there oh, are, are, yeah, are definitely good. Yeah, we, we we can't wait to hear the old Canada at the top step of the podium at F1. And I know that if somebody's gonna do it, it's it's gonna be you. Um, we're we're behind you. We know for sure that a lot of people in Canada are now uh, starting to tune into the sport, uh, which is great. It's magnificent. Uh, uh, we're um, we're friends with Tim Horaney. Tim Horaney is the guy that does the F1 stuff at TSN. Uh, and he's also rooting for you a lot. He's making sure he's working his ass off. You and you and Latifi, uh, uh, alike. Yeah. As as far as the Canadian media is concerned, when you do make it to F1, you you're pretty much guaranteed that Tim Horaney uh, and we are gonna be working our TSN's ass off. TSN's gonna be pumping to make sure pumping that some stroll content. Oh yeah, that, that that you are first and foremost. And honestly, we 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 can't wait for for the news to come. And we and. You know, uh, we can't wait for you to clinch your F3 title and take it from there. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of I me. Really, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, man. I guess uh, we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, you have, uh, I'm sure, tons of stuff to do today. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, just keep killing it. Hey, hey, Lance. Yeah. Say what's up to Claire Tell for me. me. Say what's up to Claire for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Take care. All, All right. the best. Have Thank a good day, man. Good luck this weekend. All right. Cheers. Cheers. What a nice guy. Could he be our, like, prime minister or something like that? Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be 18 for that, too. Oh, True. We'll just bend the rules a bit. It's fine. Yeah, it's better. Like, I think America, you have to be, what, 38 or 41 or something? Some, to be some president? Crazy, to be president. Yeah. Really? I no didn't 18, know that. Yeah. You, have to, you have to be, like... One huh. of the like the old F one drivers, a real adult or whatever. Yeah, you know, air quotes. <laughs> well, that was so that was Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll. What yeah. a what a like really just down to earth person. Yeah. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. I w- so cool. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was that, that was he's cool, cool for himself. For, ah, for sure. And and, Very, and, and, yeah. and he's so he's already in the mindset. You can see that like he he's not like he he he's, he knows where he is. There's a clear he, path, Gilles. 
Yeah. Jack Stroll. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Uh, we didn't ask him about uh, about the Villeneuve's and if. Oh well. I think it's probably Gilles. Yeah. Well, he he was he was just he was the the trailblazer. Not to, not to even touch on talent or mm-hmm. achievements or whatever. Just he was the trailblazer. He was the Canadian kicking ass. The circuits named after him. He brought he brought up went to Quebec and I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No. That's it. He he made the uh, he he turned Quebec into an F one loving province yeah, and yeah. and by by doing that basically the, the rest of canada i mean canada has yeah, not canada that has a motorsport tradition if anything because of jill yeah and and then jack kept it and hopefully stroll will, will... The, the circuit would have been called the jack villeneuve international circuit or whatever if he was if his father wasn't a racer right yeah. like they both had obviously well, their talents but... <laughs> yeah I think Gilles was way more legendary than Jack. <laughs> yeah, he, he 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 got the advantage too of coming from like the death trap cars and you know ra- racing with some uh, the guys who have become legends. Oh yeah, like you know, like the people from Jack's era will be the legends in another decade. And and and, and, know, and the people from just, Lance's yeah. era, if if Lance makes it to F to F one next year, he's gonna be like right there with Verstappen, with Ocon, maybe Leclerc, maybe you know. With, with um, what's what's the other? There's like a Russian now in, in the mix. Anyway, the, these it, signs. Markalov. Yeah, it, with this new generation, that there's no way that they're not gonna be future legends, you know, or at least like make some splash, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, so that was that. Uh, if uh, anybody was here just to to see the uh, the Lance Stroll interview, you can move on to with your day now, because now we're going to move on. We are going to move on to the Malaysian Grand Prix. Why don't we take a quick pause here and uh, regroup, are, regroup are we, for about gonna, three or four minutes. Do that? I can hit pause. We'll regroup for three or four minutes. We're going to come back with a preview of the uh, Malaysian Grand Prix this weekend. A couple, um, couple of weird driver news. Pirelli, the tires. People are pissed about that. But the big, the big news for this weekend is Sipang. Absolutely. The research, it's kind of like we're going to another new race this year. Yes. Yeah. The entire circuit has been repaved and more than half, probably like two thirds of it has been reprofiled. It's pretty incredible. It's it's fun. It's the, I didn't realize this, that the circuit is in its 18th season this year. 17 years old, I think. I believe this is the 18th race in in Malaysia. It's yeah, it's and it, and it should be a good one. It's always a good one, and in, the weather is unexpected. I would have guessed like a decade, but damn. No, yeah, it's it's, it's been, been around for a while, and because yeah. it, it looks it looks pretty modern. It looks of this of this time. This was the first of the modern circuits of the uh, the Toki 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 era. The to- the, the Toki drums. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna take a a, a couple minutes break, and then uh, we'll be back, guys. We will we will return. We're taking a break. Oh, we're taking. How do we how do we do? How do I stop this? Yeah, that's that's why I said how are we gonna Mike do? is the producer. I'm not supposed to be sitting in this chair. Yeah, my cap keeps on it. Oh, jeez. Sorry, I, it's fine. <laughs> okay, we'll return. To Vince uh, on the chat. Exciting times ahead for us. Yes. Uh, you know how uh, okay. they are on. Uh, I think what I think I believe it's Spanish. Uh, we're on the up and up. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a real saying. People say it. Yeah, people in do. Spain. Yeah, absolutely, absolute. Um, nice and Grand Prix with some big news. Well, some news anyway from mm. uh, from the track that uh, uh, the gentleman here to my right has said is perhaps the most fun track to drive. I think so. I think I think <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's pretty flowy. It's got some good elevation. It's wide. Mm-hmm. Never been there in real life to feel the heat. That part doesn't seem fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a company called Dromo Applied Italian Circuit Design has tried to make it even more fun, improve on on the original design. This, this was, like I was just saying before we came back here, this is the first of the Tilki circuits. Mm-hmm. It was built all the way back in 2009, which I didn't realize was that old. This is the 18th running of the Malaysian Grand Prix, as far as I know. Oh, my God. 18, 17-year-old circuit. It's crazy, but anyways, they decided for this year to completely resurface the entire circuit and reprofile a bunch of it, like a bunch of it. Some of it was just to improve water drain off runoff. Some of it was to improve overtaking. Some of it was to make it more difficult. Some parts were to make it a little easier. 
it's kind of all over the place. You can pull up those uh, those two links here. They've done a good rundown on uh, these two links. The motorsport.com has got some pictures from the design and some uh, F1 Fanatics got the, these side-by-sides. This might be better, but it kind of starts in the middle of the gallery for some reason, the link. So you got to like skip ahead through the picture. No, but, but the hang, hang, hang on a second. Leave this picture up because I think that if anything, I, I guess I didn't, I hadn't, I didn't notice this that it was like this. Turn five though. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. But no, this, this, this is a new one though. That, that is what they're doing, right? Like they're, 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 they're adding that camber there, the extra camber. On the second half of, on, the, on turn six there. Yeah. Yeah. Start at turn one though. Let's go back no, to no, turn one. No, but hang on a second. I think this is interesting because it, it, it shows right away that there's basically now two ways to approach that corner. This corner is one of the most fun. You're going over 250 kilometers an hour through turn five and six. It's like a big sweeping left and a big sweeping right. But on the the old layout, but why are we starting here? Okay, fine, 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 fine. fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's come back to this for a second. Click, click next, next, next. Go forward. Yeah, you'll get to turn one. Yeah, I don't know why the pictures are also backwards. So like next is going to the first turn. Next one. But what what they've done for the okay one more one more back one more. Here we go. So the first corner is very similar to how the China circuit starts. It's like a never ending right like that circles around. It's almost a three three sixty corner, and then like a never ending left. And kind of what they did here is you can see in the outside they added a curb and they changed the inside curb, and on the the exit of the second turn they raised up they raised up the the exit i, I guess you, you'd say like so they sort of pushed the apex further and lifted it up to add drainage oh yeah so you can go back to the the previous picture yeah. mike's screwing around there's a lot of wires here in the <laughs> yeah if you can click to uh, turn three uh, back? previous yeah. yeah previous photo is turn three somehow so here, these are not actually race lines, but the blue there shows where the water runoff was designed to go before. Mm -hmm. And outside of turn three, remember, they, uh, this was a problem in the race last year, or, or when it's when it's rained at this oh, anytime yeah, it's rained it at the circuit. It formed rivers. Yeah, it makes like a little yeah, river yeah, off yeah, of turn yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they did was raise the center of the circuit up, so it's kind of crested. It's like a uh, it's like a little hill, and the water runs off three ways now. They've yeah. way improved the drainage here. So you can go to the next one. This previous, <laughs> the next previous, and uh, here they just changed the curbing on corner four. Nothing too crazy. You can go to the next one. But the uh, the run up to this corner though like the 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 the, mm, the front straight we actually bumpy. skipped the front straight it was bumpy the same way there were three dips like that where the car would go like woo, 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 and sort of like give you like a couple waves they smooth that right out i bet you, i think in another 18 17 years it's going to look the same again this it like the, well, yeah the uh the waviness it's, is going to come back all, with the, the heat well they, they built it in basically swamp water <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it rains all the time in malaysia yeah. it's yeah. hot as hell because it keeps the asphalt soft yeah and that's just gonna happen but uh, yeah, the the entrance to the corner is the same except it's a lot smoother now so it should be a little easier you can go to the next one this next one is uh turn five and six where okay. we were now here's here's the real deal <gasps> Yeah, so I think here those are. Oh, these are just where the water would have. Those been. are also the, the water, but also the way that it's profiled, like that, it's crested as well. So I yeah. think it's a lot easier, and you can see the red, the red wedge there. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of. That's the profile. That's a, the cross section. I that's guess. That's the profile. So turn five was cambered. It was just kind of the s surface of the track was flat, but it was angled, maybe like ten degrees in. So you get like a bit of a banking, but now it's curved. So like it's. If you go down yeah, to the second one, the new, the new way, it, it's still banked, but even steeper on the inside line. And on the outside line is almost negative cambered there. It's mm, flat. Yeah. So if you try to pass on the outside, you're going to have a harder time with grip. It's not really possible, but it looks like you'll be able to exit turn six a little wider than you used to. It, it's you not, to it's not really possible, but you can bet Max Verstappen is going to try. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is with this, that you can't that see from this edgy. picture, like I said, is you're going over 250 through oh, this left, right? Shit. And on the old design, like I haven't seen cars run on this yet. The old design, you had to get that 
perfect. Like you had to really catch the line or else you go super wide outside of turn six. So you can go to the next one. This next corner is a lot of fun too. This is super flowy, like a square corner, number seven. Uh, oh, oh, this is just skip. showing this turn is, five yeah. again. Yeah, this is sort of like Canberra. showing more of the profiling, I guess. Yeah. These pictures are in a strange order. So here we go, seven and eight. Again, bumps on the the in. Th yeah, this turn this turn was perfect. Yeah, you hit inside of seven and eight. It's a squared corner, but you run it like it's rounded. Mm -hmm. It's pretty pretty interesting. So I guess they'll be able to just hit both apexes. Like the first one, you hit it early, and the last one, you hit it late. Yeah, basically. And yeah. then the turn eight is downhill as well, so you kind of like run out when you come onto the onto the straight after eight. Mm -hmm. But I think the cars. They're, they're predicting this circuit, this new profile, is going to let the cars run three seconds faster. And the cars this year have already broken records at a few circuits, just on, oh, horse, wow. just on horsepower and efficiency and all everything combined. But I think they'll be able to run even faster through there because the bumps oh, are taking out of the, uh, the run-in. Oh, this is it's, turn nine. You can skip this one too, I think. But it looks like they put a mini curb or widen the inside. Again, mm -hmm. bumps removed on the in into this. Another thing you can't see is that that straight going into nine is a steep downhill. You go in right downhill, you hit the apex of nine right at the bottom of the hill and then climb back up to 10. And then 10, 11 is kind of a lot like seven and eight where it's kind of squared mm. off and flow, flows. Oh, but I think with all the bumps removed to the, the uh, entrances to these corners, the cars are going to be a lot more settled and faster just faster there you go new drainage as well and turns 13 and 14 all right they have to add a so they they really Malaysia like gets a lot of rain yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah, usually it's like the one like if tropical rain weather just mm. wet just wet yeah it would if i think that out of the past like few years we've had more races more wet races there than not Oh wow! Yeah, and and but th that was a problem, right? Like, it w you'd run into a situation where like the rain would stop, but there would still be puddles all over that took a while to dry out. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and like just rivers, like you can see here again, <clears throat> turn th turn thirteen is banked and flows downhill into the corners, but it's been reprofiled as a crest. So I think this corner might actually be we have to see. I guess when the cars get on circuit, it might be slower going in because. The surface is crested at the start of turn 13, like the other one, where the water can run off both sides. <laughs> mm. But, yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to find out tomorrow when practice starts. Practice starts in about 15 hours, 15, 16 hours from now. Tonight, basically. Yeah, it's going to be the Toronto time, yeah. Eastern Eastern Standard Time. We're at 11 a.m. right now. So, uh, so turn 15. Yeah, look at that crazy cambering that they added. Or no. Yeah, so like yeah. I think, like I was just saying, I think going in to turn 13, 13 is kind of you don't even really break into it. You mm -hmm. just kind of like turn in and just downshift and let the car slow. Mm -hmm. And you go like you need to get the perfect exit out of 14. So 15 is what everyone's been talking about. Yeah, this is it's basically the iconic corner of this track. Right. It's like yeah. a, it's a banked U-turn basically. But <laughs> bless you. God damn. Gesundheit. It's still very Dunk. quick. Mm -hmm. But what they've done is you sort of crested it. The inside, I think, is still slightly cambered in, but most of the width of the the full corner is almost cambered out, flat or cambered out. And it's sort of looking from this angle, the left, so the, the turn in to the corner and the right, the turn out, the exit of the corner. The exit is lower by maybe a meter or two from the in, so you kind of dipping yeah. downhill mm -hmm. but the exact on the new the new profiling they exaggerated that to push the apex go, way further go, go out to and next and like it'll show you that so yeah. that's that's it there ah, okay yeah so, oh yeah right look at that so yeah what you're seeing is the blue the blue is the old surface overlaid onto the new one you can yeah, see the height difference height. yeah so they raised up the inside of the corner and the the exit and the straight, the front straight, the main straight is so ch very similar. But if you're chasing the apex here, you're going to have a hard time now. Right. Yeah. The apex is basically to improve overtaking and force cars to go wider into the corner and take a late apex. Mm -hmm. You're sort of forcing a total, I don't know, it's just a totally different approach to it. Yeah. Approach to it yeah, for, for overtaking and just trying to hit the max speed on like a qualifying type I'll of lap. 
I wonder if it's gonna get interesting here. I, I mean, I don't think so, but the pit entry, uh, who knows? Yeah, I wonder if they scroll up a little, because that that wasn't shot on the profile. Yeah. It looks like it's been moved out. Look at that. It has. It is changed. Oh yeah. Look where the, so the new entrance to the pit lane is right on the mm -hmm. outside line of the track, oh, like yeah, right where that. the circuit meets the grass, and the old one is maybe halfway through three quarters of the way through the full oh. corner halfway through the exit and of look, the corner they put like the gravel trap like or whatever like that that, that runoff like they made what they've actually done it's it's hard to see with this like i don't know we already went through this we don't need to go through the side by sides but uh, anyone who wants to go to the uh, f1fanatic.co.uk they have a good uh, like a slider you can see the pictures side by side mm -hmm. but what they've done you can't see with these black and white pictures is a lot of the grout so a lot of the paved runoffs have been turned back into gravel good time. yeah good. A, a bunch of them wherever it's they felt it was safe but they aimed for more of a compromise with motorcycles oh, than, okay. than straight uh, I see. So a lot of circuits have leaned more to moto gp than f1 right. for, for safety which you can't really blame them like a motorcycle is like it's, it's a lot more dangerous to, to drive than an, an f1 car also right? moto, G moto gp doesn't ask like as much money as Bernie does for to host a race, it's yeah. like overall like more profitable, I think, or like yeah, it's easier to break even and make a profit with more GP. Because Can we just take a moment? Are... Just to, this has been on the <laughs> I just, yeah. I just fuck it. I, just, I don't want to click it. I just <laughs> yeah click it. Yeah, so, yeah, we're done with we're done with the circuit run through. So that's that's kind of uh, what they've done. We're gonna see it uh, in person tomorrow. So this is a new track. Throw up that picture actually too of the. Uh, just well, just before we yeah, before the we F1 walk fanatic away one? from it, uh, no, no. There's a, a photo, like a helicopter photo of the new surface. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, it's the really fourth link, me. fourth link up here. I highlighted it. Yeah, but they've got so they've got a helicopter shot of the circuit from the sky, and you can and just see looks, how it looks like they just painted it the surface black. black. It's <laughs> some dark asphalt. But look at that track. So so yes, this is. Even by looking at it right there, I'm sure, Mike, you, like, you get the idea that this is f a fun track. It's nice and fun. Oh, man. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to test it out in uh, Codemasters F1. And actually, from this, these photographs right here, right look at on the right side, though. So that's turn five and six, all the way on the right, 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 right. Yeah, that big, big S, a bit down. Yeah, that big S, yeah. So the exit of six is fully gravelized now. There's no extra runoff. So oh, there's yeah. no cheating. Yeah, wicked. Turn five has some because that's the quicker corner. You're sort of starting to slow a bit into six. Like you're not flat out in it. But most of this you can see. There's almost no gravel trap. The outside of uh, seven and eight there as well. Okay. The bottom left. It's got some pavement, but they, they've re-graveled. Most of that oh, was all yeah. paved before. Almost all of that gravel is new again. So th this this whiter stuff is the gravel. That's all the, the gravel, yeah. Okay, and this this is gray. Obviously, is the, That's a when, when the okay. yeah. When the circuit was originally built in 09, it was almost all gravel. Ninety nine. Oh, sorry, ninety nine. Ninety nine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine that it's that old, man. Yeah. It's that old. At nineteen ninety nine, almost all of it was gravel, and then it, they slowly, like the idea came that we should pave some of these because it's safer for bikes and right. It, slowly got paved now it's gone when, back when the other way paved? sorry this recently yeah yeah just for this year yeah for, for this, this year, year. In, yeah. The, in the past few months yeah so um, i remember you guys mentioning i think one of the previous races also had um his computer just died my computer just died it just turned right off <laughs> rip danny's laptop hashtag yeah uh you guys were mentioning that you know uh freshly paved uh road is now um which one do you want this guy here um it tends to get like a little slippery yeah because yes. it, this it hasn't been worn in right and mm -hmm. like this is how new the circuit is here tarmac is like it, it's such it's such a like it, it's it's almost like a like a liquid right tar itself and then you know what you need to the like bitumen and the asphalt is uh, yeah and for the next like year pretty much it's gonna be like still like every once in a while like getting some oils out until mm -hmm. like it finally settles and then you know people dry it and like it goes from like that rich black that is now into like a sort of grayish color which like is how some it was of the, the yeah. stones start to surface there's you know yeah all, this is another well I, I don't know what they did here what the surface is but mm -hmm. a lot of circuits are very different some of them they put more stones in the asphalt some of them they put less so you get more ah, of a, okay. a grippy surface but will wear your tires faster or you can go smooth and have more of a 
I don't know, a, a slippery surface, I guess, but the tires last longer on it. But yeah, this when it rains too on new asphalt, it brings out all that oil. Out. That's the thing. So something was actually done in this past and, week, and that's but, that, that's when those the white lines, anything that's painted, mm. becomes super slippery. Like you do not want to touch that because yeah. otherwise you're off. So Charlie Whiting was actually at the circuit in the past two weeks because there were safety concerns that when it rained there some of the drainage wasn't good enough so they actually dug and added a few more drains and had to cut a few more drainage lines like they cut sort of grooves in the circuit that water kind of follows i guess like just channel follow, yeah. yeah follows these channels off off into the grass off into the gravel so it's off the surface but when it rains too that water soaks into the asphalt and then when the sun comes back out it after it's been dried the drivers change back to dry tires it starts coming back out oh uh, yeah shit, so huh? They've sort of, Charlie Whiting is whatever. He said he's satisfied for the weekend. They've added more drainage, cut more lines. The water's going to hopefully run off before it gets a chance to soak in anywhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just a characteristic of a new asphalt. By the time they come back next year, we won't even be talking about this. And that's it. No, but it's interesting that, that we do that. That's that gonna add. No, I mean uh, we're not gonna be talking about just like the surface characteristics. It'll oh, be worn in and oh, yeah. just like any the road in front of your house, right? Like, oh, but it, it's gonna look like anything. It's gonna make it. We're in. obviously gonna talk about Malaysia next. Oh time. man. What? Oh man. What happened? What happened? Oh man. No, the, you just looked up the, the weather. Oh, the weather. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Risk Holy. of thunderstorms. Friday and Sunday, risks of thunderstorms. Friday, su Saturday. Oh, Sunday's been upgraded. I looked this morning when I woke up, it was around 50%. Now we're seeing 80. 80%. 37 oh degrees Celsius. It's gone, the prediction's gone up a few degrees as well. A wet Malaysian Grand Prix. 80% humidity with, with 30. Fresh asphalt, like with all that oil in it, that's going to be primo. That's what Red Bull wants, yeah, yeah. apparently. That's, that's what Red Bull has been keeping their fingers crossed for. They really want a wet race because they think, uh, according to their simulations and everything that they have... The super grip rake that they run. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's going to help them out. Yeah, Even yeah, though yeah. this is a quick circuit. This is one of the flat-out circuits with the quick corners. This this usually uh, uh, favors the the low-to-mid downforce teams, the, the all-arounder teams. This is uh, more of an all-arounder circuit. But yeah. everybody's going to have to go a little slower because of the rain. So then then, then the down for the extra downforce that the Red Bull has is going to come to play. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. man. Verstappen. You, you know, Danny Rick even said that that he's learned from Verstappen. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, he's seen. Hashtag so humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says that uh, that he's doing some, some other stuff out there. He's been learning from Verstappen's technique. Um, yeah. Which... But I guess he said that he's, he also said that that Verstappen is very much like Vettel. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. He said, um, he, I think I think he's like his drivingness is <laughs> like Vettel. That he's he's similar or something like that. He's like as good. He, this Danny Rick posted this on uh, Instagram. I think yesterday. This is how hot Malaysia is. He's just sweating his balls off. Look at that face, man. I'm, he's wetter than when I come out of the shower. <laughs> yeah. I don't even look that wet when I come out. My hair's too short, I guess. But look how wet he is, man. It's unbelievable the heat there. <laughs> what a imagine. character. Like, we had a really, like, this has been the all of Earth average temperature for 2016 is the highest that's ever been recorded since weather has been written down, right? This is the hottest temperature ever, and it's our hometown here what do we reach 35s and 6s this summer well it definitely not every day and not driving a, a car when that's well it was in toronto at least yeah. it was the hottest uh summer on record ever yeah all of earth average yeah. temperature is the hottest year on record ever yeah it's insane man from the north pole to the equator right that it's, it's hot and it's, it's gonna hot. be yeah and it's gonna be hot um in malaysia yeah, uh, and it's gonna be humid. Well, I mean, unless it's, well, it rains, so it's gonna, if it's gonna be raining and hot with um, uh, with the track the way it is, this is a, it's gonna be a new tr like. Okay, I know that you said this before, but it's almost like we're getting a new track this year. Yeah, it is. It's it's similar to the old one, of course, and it's gonna it's gonna have like it's gonna take the drivers like just a little bit to adjust to it, but in in a, in a sense, you you can't really take the previous lap records into consideration you know what i mean no, it has to be a reset like there'll be a there's gonna have to be a record like the uh the 99 to 16 record or the 99 to 15 record and yeah. the 16 plus record for yeah. sure for sure 
Yeah, but and uh, we we watched the uh, the drivers press conference this morning when we were prepping for this show, and that's yeah. something that Button said is that he's going to be working extra hard this weekend, watch watching all the sessions of the feeder series that are racing as well. Yeah, just to get an idea like what's what lines are these drivers taking, what looks like it works better, and he's watching the feeder series to learn from them. Be- because yeah, because. Uh, they're going in in an a like into it blindly like they, so yeah I think I've heard that like the thinking drivers actually do that they watch the GP2 and GP3 to see like what's what, been what working yeah. it was it there Okani said is either way it would have been new for him anyways because he's never been there before true <laughs> so he never he never got to drive the old circuit I feel sorry for him who are we playing as Massa or Baltas Baltas why not Baltari <laughs> give, him a, give him a little plug here, VB77, the Valtteri Bottas YouTube channel was launched yesterday with his... Man, uh, I had high hopes for that. Self, <laughs> was, self-produced the life story. I was, I was hoping that he was going to, like, you know, show his hometown around and, like, go out and, like, say hi to, like, a high school buddy or, like, go on to a bakery and, like, get a, you know, whatever, like, whatever Finnish people eat. And, and and like that's, you know, that's what I thought, right? Like show, yeah. like this is this is my my car. Here's my parents like, and my sister, actually, whatever his family members. Well, that was a tagline. That's what it said. Like oh, it's gonna be like on my journey from Nostola or whatever he is in in Finland to F one. So I thought that he was actually gonna be there and like do something cool. But no, it was just him talking, like sitting down talking to a camera for like a minute and a half. I'm sure some of this exact criticism that we're making right now is posted by all kinds of trolls underneath his video and. Whoever he hired to produce this, he's calling him up and they're scrambling to re-edit the rest of the series right I now. I hope so. I don't know. Unless that was... We don't know either. It might just be the intro. Like, it's mm. like a, this is me. He just kind of... Yeah. The whole thing, if you haven't seen it, is just kind of him sitting there in a nice shirt yeah. with a background and like two. I, th- I thought so too. I was, I was like, man, that shirt is nice. <laughs> <laughs> two kind of stylized camera angles and he's just saying like, hey, I'm, I'm Valtteri and this and that. I think you're racing here the, the old, old the old layout. You can oh, even, you, it's, it's close enough. You can even see it with that grass on the outside. Well, yeah, it's it's still gonna be good. Um, we'll see all the puddles. <laughs> yeah, the river. Oh, did you did you set it for rain weather? Uh, light rain. Nice, nice. I, I thought I'd do a balance. <laughs> Heavy rain, I just won't be able to drive. So you know, j- just while we talk here, because of copyrights and Bernie's stubbornness, Mike's gonna run a lap or two on the uh, the video game here, so you can. F one twenty sixteen. Yeah, F one twenty sixteen. You can just get a look at the. Uh, the track layout from this angle is the only legal way we can do it. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Well, they do a good job of it, too. They make it look all professional That's and nice. Good, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I'm also not a great driver, by the way. <laughs> You're better than me, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh, this, do you do you know who's, who holds uh, the circuit record uh, for the lap record here? For here? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I guess. Is it Schumacher? No, Montoya. Montoya. Yeah, right. He's oh. got it. He's still got it. Still oh, since. Oh, I got I got a whole Two thousand and four. I see my clutch. Since two thousand and four, he's got a couple. Like <laughs> he has a couple of records. Yeah. In 04. Yeah. Good. Well, that was back but in the V ten days. Now that was a one thirty four twenty two. That could be smashed this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Which is exciting. Unless it, unless it rains, I guess. If it rains, oh, for qualifying. Well, Pablo's probably rules. gonna be watching this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must so, get to you, man. As a, as a, as an old driver, like if if you if you had like a long standing record, like for over ten years, it's been him. Twelve oh, years wow. now, twelve years running. I don't think anything can get to that guy anymore, though. Like uh, honestly, he's oh god, probably one of here, the boys. most experienced drivers on earth as far yeah, as he's a variety so of experience. Many he's been a champ car, Indy car, NASCAR, Formula One, yeah. every almost every he's, yeah, worthwhile he, mention. He hasn't done Le Mans, maybe. No, he did Le Mans. Yeah, I think he, he's, yeah. he's done endurance racing too. I don't know specifically oh, any of his record, but he's done all those other ones. It's, <laughs> oh, he's done well in every series as well. Like he's worked for, he hasn't started at the bottom and like, oh, I'll work my way up. No, he's a badass driver. Just uh, talking about the heat here, I watched, uh, just to hype myself up, the uh, Inside Grand Prix show. You know, that, whoever yeah, yeah, that I, think, I think it's, uh, well, I don't know, actually. This week on Inside Grand Prix. Does, is this a mo- motorsport? Uh, yeah, I think motorsport.com yeah. makes it. But they, yeah. they, I don't know why they use a lot of old footage sometimes. Because it's the shit that they have copyright. What they have left over, yeah. <laughs> like they had, they had a clip in it of um, Michael Schmidt. Not not you the <laughs> the AM the AMUS Michael Schmidt, and he's he's talking about 
so like team budgets and stuff in pounds like he clearly wasn't talking about malaysia or the video clearly wasn't from this year mm. there's a few things like that but they, they did a mini segment on keeping cool in malaysia mm. some of the dri- danny ricks at last you know some of the drivers wear those ice vests it looks like a bulletproof vest but it's made of ice instead some guys do that or like we, we talked about uh from the previous few races sometimes your your drinks button turns your protein syrup or whatever they're drinking into like a tea it must be here must be hell drinking that trying to drink that you just hydrate yourself before you get out there but anyways just a stupid quote from them one of the most important is keeping your engine cool and they cut to a clip of one of the engineers with the uh, the dry ice hose you know they, sp- yeah. they they blow that into the engine to keep it extra cold he had that stuck up his pant leg <laughs> spraying his balls with dry ice cold. oh man <laughs> but it was just just the quote you it's very important to keep your engine cool <laughs> and the guys spraying dry ice on his balls yes. i guess only i thought it was funny <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, you gotta keep cool somehow, man. <laughs> Last, uh, actually, I was looking for, I was looking at some pictures of, um, uh, of this track and and, and, and this race last year, mm-hmm. and it did seem like most people were wearing like those stupid vests with the yeah, quite a few the, actually with yeah. the ice with the ice whatever the dry ice. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna, gonna wonder what the uh, like the sort of discussion with the team is here, like you know, because. It's Danny Rick, one of the taller guys. Um, I guess Eric Erickson and Huckerberg are taller too, but they're like more skinny, I guess, just naturally. But a lot of them have been complaining about their their diets with the new weight restriction this year. Oh yeah. So how much does that vest must weigh? Like a kilo, right? That's a, that's. Oh, well, I think weight. they only I think they only wear it like while they're walking around. Like in they don't go and like wear it inside their vest, inside their their fire suit. I think some of them do. Really? On top of the fire suit? Huh. Well, yeah, Lance Stroll just told us you can't wear anything under the fire suit. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but that makes sense. But no, I th- well, I guess we'll, I'm, I'm gonna double check. I'll watch. I'll watch for it. Maybe during the practice sessions, at least you can wear it while you're driving because those milliseconds aren't as important. Yeah, maybe. But uh, like it's, in, it's, in in Monza, man, like, it's gotta get to you. Like I've I've like I know that like I've you know I I grew up in Colombia. I it's gotten. I, like it's as hot in Colombia, probably relatively uh, from where I come from, as it is in Malaysia, and you know, kind of the same kind of weather, humid, and like it rains all the time or whatever. Right. And just trying to do anything, like just let alone driving one of these cars, but trying to do anything <laughs> in that heat is, is like it, it's like your brain half shuts off, and like sometimes like you're just doing stuff like on plane, like uh, on just like instinct. A few things that you have to do. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like I, I, I used to play like uh, not all the time, and I suck at it. But playing soccer with my friends, I remember like like after a while, like I would just be like, "Fuck this!" Like, <laughs> I'll like, watch you guys. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there was like three of us in this podcast room this morning, and then like it just got too hot. Like, <laughs> no, I can't imagine what they have to deal with. Oh, I hit the wall. Good lord, you suck. Yeah, I'm pretty hot. <laughs> so bad, guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the the heat just, it's just incredible. I don't know. And two two hot races back to back. Like these guys are getting a pounding this it's year. It's good okay. to get them over with, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> are arguably yeah. the hottest. Yeah, like uh, the, the, those two are the hottest. I think so. Yeah. Even like Abu Dhabi. Because that, that's, well, that's, that's dry heat. heat. That's part dry, of the, and that, that's part of the reason they run it into the sunset. Bahrain though is another hot one, but I think they run that early in the year so it's a little cooler there mm. it's not in the dead of summer where they run that race yeah so yeah more probably the hottest you know like maybe three years ago when we went to uh canada that might have qualified up there where True. it was in the 30s like 32 or something that everyone was, was dying shit. nobody was prepared for that no no the, the drivers and audience are like nobody was they sold a lot of beer that weekend <laughs> yeah. for sure oh, <laughs> yeah that that rate that was just a freak weather though that was like they brought the weather with them or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, anyway. I'm getting some frame rate drops here in the, in the game here. In the game window yeah. and in the broadcast. We're, we're doing a lot of things here, boys. Doing a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Um, after Malaysia, though, we can we can look forward to Japan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but that that's a story for another another podcast. Is it uh, two weeks from now, or is it like a one week sort of thing? Jeez, oh, you know what. I'm I want to. I want to. Certain it's two weeks, but yeah, you can check. I guess just check that quick. Yeah, 
Another one we've been sort of following this because it's been tight the last few races is the uh, Force India Williams uh, team team yeah, race. Like there, there's there's so it's Malaysian Grand Prix this weekend and then next weekend is Japan. For those of you that like to ignore the Mercedes because you know, they're dominant, whatever, blah blah, everyone hates th- <laughs> hates them because of that. Uh, another Mercedes uh, might actually clinch the title this weekend. It's possible. Yeah. It's, it's possible if they finish the constructors. Like, oh yeah, the constructors. The constructors yeah. yeah. The uh, the drivers' championship might come down to the last race, though. The, um, the Hamilton's dipped back a little bit, and he, I saw him in an interview this week where he was sounding pretty upset and saying that he wasn't even sure if he per- he said the team's got what it takes, the team's got the car and everything, but he wasn't sure if he had the car. So I don't know what he was hinting at there, or I don't know. maybe Nico's mechanics something like that i think i think he's still like he thinks that he's gotten screwed perhaps that they gave him some like i said earlier like put a few grains of sand in his (laughs) in in one of the pistons or something like that (laughs) i don't know what he what he thinks well man i don't personally i don't think it's i think it's just luck like you just been running on high luck and that's just how life goes you know that's what that's what that's what the british media has been saying for forever like it's like oh you know lewis howell he has he 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 just has had so much bad luck and nico rosberg just hasn't had any bad luck i try to keep much bad luck i try to keep on biased i think it's the luck thing but hamilton himself this week was saying that you know i'm not but i'm not sure if i have the card just the way he worded it and listen i'm not I'm not a, a, a Rosberg apologist or like or no. like by no by no means like a <laughs> Rosberg fan at all, but he stood he's, he stood his own ground this year more so than last year. Yeah, and last year was more so than the year before. Yeah, he's clearly doing something right. He, and his win last week was not an accident. No, and you can say that for most of the races he's won this year. There have been some situ- circumstances when he when he did have. Hamilton, yeah. Uh, when he when he did have like a bit of uh, a bit of good luck, Rosberg has had like good luck in, in terms of mechanical problems that, that Lewis has had. But at this point, we have to say that they are like they're fighting and and they're fighting for the championship so closely matched because they are they have been closely matched. Yeah, yeah. Did you see? Uh, yeah, I'm pulling up. I forgot to save the uh, the picture, but it's it's not. Really? <laughs> <laughs> another one of hamilton's costumes here for the listeners <laughs> hamilton's on the front of a magazine called men's folio but anyways he's wearing a fucking black cowboy hat this with is... what looks like a white scarf around his neck and a jean shirt underneath some sort of uh some sort of a blazer he looks uh very ridiculous like he's lost his horse <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's that stare for like oh there he he's goes. got the thousand <laughs> yards there absolutely looking for his heart. Th- th- this guy he's focusing on the un- under brim of his hat <laughs> oh my goodness look at him man look at his face eh. hey. he thinks it's halloween halloween's next month man next in a month it's, he's lewis hamilton you can do whatever yeah, he wants yeah. at this point he can fucking you see like this like a week or two to the past he, if was... he wants to be a british cowboy let him be a british cowboy it, you... <laughs> he was down in the caribbean getting twerked on by rihanna and uh, he, he can do whatever he wants <laughs> whatever he wants at, at, at the same time what a just guy. before before we move on from these two clowns you see ross Burke taking some different kind of negative publicity this week what do you I, do i'm now? not even gonna look it up because it's whatever he had instagrammed or tweeted or whatever a picture of his wife and his daughter and oh they're yeah on, they're sitting on the the bow of his yacht and it's clearly going really fast they're out in the ocean and his kid's standing up on the bench his daughter <laughs> with no life jacket on mm. so yeah you know come on man yeah he took a lot of I, heat for that i know instagram is important heat. but i know life jackets aren't you know i know where so. we live it's the law like yeah. that, that's the <laughs> law I, mean, I guess in the ocean you can do whatever the fuck you want there's international laws <laughs> take place but i don't know uh here i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna send you uh a link now mike just just let me like just put it up for a second hang on uh just be, before right, right at the top of uh yeah before we get excited by these mercedes yeah. Mercedes guys. Oh, okay, I'll wait one second here for this. This is because I know that we're, we're talking about like these drivers preparing for the heat. This is apparently Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, this is what they. <laughs> Damn. Go. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and he so it's it, for our, for our listeners. This is a video that Puma Motorsport posted of Kimi Raikkonen in a sauna with like two of his mechanics, I guess, and they're dying, and he's just uh, just breaking a sweat. He set it up to Iceman. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he turned it up past ninety nine degrees. But you you got you gotta think. <laughs> Kimi he's Raikkonen sitting there in his race suit in a sauna. He's not known for like doing this, this kind of shit. stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, like oh, it's... he got paid. That was a Puma commercial. Yeah, yeah. It was a that? Puma commercial. Oh, this is from Puma's yeah, Twitter yeah. page. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, but even getting him to do this like is big for Kimi. Must be big. Yeah, the check was huge. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. the check was gigantic. That's well, why he's, 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 he's well, fucking well, smiling. How yeah, much do you think yeah. they paid him? A lot of money. <laughs> he's a family man now. He's got he's got to do this kind of shit now. He he said to quote this week that his child has not changed anything about his career his driving style etc do you think that the, maybe he heard us because we have been we have been peddling that argument for a while that as soon as drivers get a kid they start like driving a little bit more carefully and whatever as soon as everyone gets yeah. a kid yeah but yeah. he's like no 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 come on it's he's me. closed the gap it's though me. yeah it's me he, uh, he did. yeah what can you say he's closed the gap to vettel well that's another story like what is gonna that's happen another battle yeah to with watch ferrari outside of Mercedes. This, like are they gonna finish like even in the podium i don't think so man not here i don't know even between these two guys who's gonna finish the championship ahead that's true right Holy crap. another one to watch yeah in the constructors even if mercedes clinches it this weekend is force india and williams this is a big story because the gap between them last year was like around 20 million dollars yeah just based on williams finishing in fourth and force india fifth in the standings force india is right now sitting one point one point different from williams the 111 versus 112 it's tight it's as tight as it can be for the rest of the season and it's it's up to those four drivers you're gonna see some tight battles i wouldn't be surprised if any pair of these four guys take each other out yeah, we're talking about a, a five-point difference in between uh, Raikkonen and Vettel. Mike's got the driver standings here, too. In yeah. seventh is Valtteri Bottas-Williams. Eighth and ninth is Perez and Hockenberg for India. And tenth is Massa-Williams. Massa's got to pull his own weight here. he got to catch up to... Uh, Massa doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's retiring. <laughs> he's a Force retiring. India sandwich. Stroll should give him a call. Be like, hey, man, you're making my, uh, my seat look bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of there. No, but seriously, um, I guess that is like I actually. Bottas is gonna get the black. Tea, I hadn't. Right? I hadn't black, realized. Bottas is gonna get the black tee next year. He, yeah, he would be a more experienced driver. Yeah, yeah. He's got the black tee. Got to fight for that black tee, man. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I, I hadn't realized that. Look, or, or it wasn't like at the fore, foremost in my mind. There is only five points between Vettel and Raikkonen. That is, like, if yeah, if Vettel slips again, Raikkonen is gonna. Reckon is going to get the fifth in the championship, or sorry, fourth in the championship. And um, the gap in that's between. Very close, man. Yeah. Now, the gap in between Perez and Hulkenberg, that's that's significant. That's 20 points. But Perez They're... and Bottas is only four points. So that, yeah, for India, shuffling up the scene here, man. Danny Rick killing it too, man. There's every chance that he's going to finish the first non Mercedes third place in the championship this year. Mm-hmm. That's going to happen. Verstappen's not going to make up 50 points. Like, you have to win two races that Ricardo didn't finish. Mm-hmm. There's not just, just not enough time left in the season. Yeah. Even though it's a long-ass season. But. Well, I mean, there's six races after. Yeah. Uh, just an interesting quote as well from the Williams guys. Just um, because it's so tight with Force India, just to, I don't know, anyone that's a better a gambler or whatever. And Bottas said, though, in public to the media that, he believes that Williams lacks the tire experience and expertise to really compete this year. Who, Bottas Even, said that? Bottas said that. Mm-hmm. Bottas said that. Something that Massa said was that uh, I saw he was asked who... I think this was on the Inside Grand Prix yesterday, it might have been. Mm. Anyway, it was just like a quick fire type of thing like we just did. Who is the most famous person you've got in your phone? He, without hesitation, he said, Eric Clapton. He texts me before every race. <laughs> just a funny quote. Who said that? He's not going to be getting many what more is? texts, though. So. No, Massa. Massa. Oh, Massa. Yeah, they, they didn't ask about it. It was like a quick fire between the two Williams guys. They didn't ask about that, or they skipped his answer. Maybe yeah. he doesn't know anybody yet. He's trying to get famous. Yeah. I need Eric Clapton in my phone, man. How come I don't know Drake? Where's my Rihanna twig? <laughs> Give me a cow- He's going to come back, show up this weekend with a cowboy hat. This whole... This whole sleeve tattooed. Yeah. 
<laughs> he's, yeah, he, he, I guess they're they're all. And that's what I'm saying. Like I saw that thing with Kimmy. I think it 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 really has changed. I think it dawned, it's dawned to all of them that they have to get more people out there in the social media. They have to yeah. get for yeah. themselves personally, for their teams, for the sport itself, for yeah. everything. Man. They have just, to just, they just have the to modern times. Yeah, it's just and at one, you got to think that at one point when their careers is over, they have to look. You know, when their careers is uh, is over. What do They're, like yeah? What, what do yeah? It, what yeah? What are you gonna be like? What 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 are gonna be like your your revenue streams? And accumulating this kind of footage early on, like now, to like maybe be, be able to like use it later and like some sort of like you know this is my life story, that's gonna come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, that doesn't make sense. What I was about to say. You know. <laughs> but yeah, 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 for sure. Just. All, all these guys can afford themselves too to hire like a really a small startup production company and say like hey i want to do like botas did we, we haven't seen the next episodes but there might be like they followed him around his town or something and mm. i don't know a lot, a lot of athletes in other sports one or two in particular i'm not allowed to talk about anymore i promise <laughs> but they're, they're doing similar things like <laughs> and especially in a sport like this and the similar ones that you could compare like I don't know, like all the racing series, whatever. Oh, that, oh yo, Vince LaBera just says, like, if Rosberg becomes world championship, or world, cha uh, world champion, will he get the black tee next year? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, yeah, I, no. I think, I think um, Hamilton would just be like, you know what, I, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forget this. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to be world champion with the yellow tee if he wins it, but... I'm, I've still got he, faith in Hamilton. I, th I think I think, I think if, it might come down to Abu Dhabi again, or if almost. Which would be awesome. Yeah. And if he wins, though, I do like. I'm pretty sure Rosberg will go for the number one car. Like he will, like you know, like Hamilton, that they, they kept his 44. Rosberg will like he will wear that number one with pride. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else, but wasn't it Rosberg just recently? He resigned for one year, right? With, well, no, with they're, Mercedes. They're, they're both till 2018. Or he's got two. He's he, yeah. he just I think. Yeah. So, I, there has to be that's like a 40 page contract it's in there his t he's the second driver yeah he he is he's gonna be they can't they can't give him the black t even if he wins the champion lewis is like who's got more who's yeah. got more who's gonna win this the yeah. next one he's got the most races ever without winning a championship just on, on those numbers buttons 300th race this weekend that's kind of cool for him well, he th he didn't seem to think so in the in the press conference when people when we were asking him. Yeah, yeah, maybe he felt old or something. He must be. Maybe just old. reminded him of his uh, retirement or his soft retirement. <laughs> He's kind of uh, like we were saying, like. In, not really sold on his own retirement. He's kind of pretend. I think he's pretending himself a bit. He's like, I oh, you know maybe maybe if I like it or if one of these guys, uh, maybe Alonso will get tired. Maybe. Maybe Van Dorn. Yeah. No, Van Dorn's gonna kick Alonso's ass. Maybe he'll get Alonso's seat, but he's not gonna take it if Van Dorn's Ooh, killing. Van Dorn's him. gonna kick Alonso's ass. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Maybe not kick we'll his ass, but he'll he'll, it'll he'll, be, he'll, he'll it'll be competitive. Be, that fight is gonna be in, actually McLaren it's next be year. It's gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna man. be very interesting. Mm. Uh, you, okay, so recently, uh, uh, one of the things that like made it to the top of uh, of, <laughs> of Reddit was uh, some guy, one some Reddit user. Uh, claimed that McLaren was going to win Singapore this year, and if they didn't, that he'd eat, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Like, one of his... <laughs> one of his and, and, yeah, he showed me that this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to... I, I kind of want to wanna, wanna do one of those that, like, I'll eat something nasty uh, if McLaren don't win next year at all. Because, I you know, I think that they have, the, like... <laughs> yeah, he did. He actually... <laughs> Um, we should start doing these bets for like every race. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. No, no, seriously, like, think of something. Pick something in this room, and I'll eat it if McLaren doesn't doesn't win next year. How about At this banana peel? Time. I'll save it in a Ziploc bag for I you. Don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just I ate this most of this banana like an hour ago, and I just ate the last bite. You don't want to eat this peel. No. <laughs> Even five minutes from now, this was this was bright yellow when I took it off the bunch this morning. It's black now. Oh my god. Okay, don't eat the banana peel. But yeah, seriously, I will, cause I am I am willing to like to say that McLaren is gonna win next year at least once, maybe, probably. Oh, willing to bet on something? Well, my man, cause <laughs> cause we're talking about like they're they're all they're all gonna show up. They're ready. They say they're ready. Yeah, and they're gonna show up with like a, this step in engine performance. They're from last year to this year. 
between last year to this year and this year to next year is going to be monumental because there's no tokens to worry about. So these teams can actually like just like Do Honda whatever. could just show up with a brand new engine that actually does the job. You know. Right. Speaking yeah. of, they're bringing their upgrades this weekend. Yeah. Alonso's taking a 30 place penalty though. No wins for that. Whatever. It's but they're going to they're just doing testing, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And no, and they they yeah. also like built Basically like a huge home. facility or like they made they made revamps to their huge uh facility in England. So they like Honda has a uh, an engine facility um close to Milton Keynes. So that on top Milton of the announced we we mentioned they they Honda themselves announced maybe it was 3 weeks ago now that they've hired and separated their engine team into two and they have a whole separate group now working right. on the 2017 2017 2018 yeah. Yeah, tw- yeah the new engines so that's so, so that's something that's, to look forward to yeah Renault might actually show up with something good again i mean i doubt it but they might like Renault is in, in a weird like management crisis they've right. now admitted over and over too that they way underestimated what they thought the season was going to be for them and that they gave up on this year a long time ago and started working on next year's car They've basically been testing, and that's part of as as well. Oh to, my God, ho- Vince LaBerra just said, "Do a shoey when Stroll becomes an F1 driver." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. We, okay, how, how about uh, like um, I won't be like a you, mounty like a mounty hat, like drink out of like like one of those mounty hats, like the the Canadian. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we didn't make it candid. Like I get the shoey thing, but. I'm not drinking out of a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. I ain't I'm drinking not. out I'll, of no shoe. I'll watch. I'll watch Jay do it. I got some dirty. I got some dirty <laughs> ass Converse yeah, that you can drink out of. Dank ass shoes myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to drink out of your. Oh, gross. Get out of here. Can it be a glass shaped like a shoe? <laughs> das boot. <laughs> uh, what I was saying there though is that Renault, as well as saying you know we've given it, we've kind of given up on this year. We underestimated it. We've been focusing on next year already. They've also said over and over for a few weeks they're in no hurry. We're not making any announcements on drivers. We're not. I think maybe both of them might be gone, and they don't want to, like we've said before, discourage uh, K Mag and Palmer. But I think it. I don't know. It's hard to say, man. I think at least Jolien's gone. He's not driving in Red No, next no, no. Jolien Palmer did absolutely nothing Jolien... this year to prove that he's a worthwhile F1 driver. Yeah. I'm sorry, British people, but he didn't. Even though he was in the conference last week yeah. and he was asked about that and his confidence was extremely low. It's yeah. disappointing to hear him even talk like that. Zero points. But zero I mean, points earned. He could have, he could have, um, like, you could say that his car just, that, that he didn't have the car to, sh- to show, like, uh, you know, a great performance. But then, but, how, like, how do you, ex- like, how do you, how do you, how do you reconcile that? With with his teammate, with his teammate number he's one, pulled seven points we can see right there, and people further down the grid like Pascal Verlein that have, despite their car, have still done something significant, something worthwhile. As far as that dude is concerned, uh, the the interview we went over with uh, Bernie last week, though he yeah. said something that maybe he probably wasn't supposed to is that he thinks Mercedes has given Verlein an engine as well as maybe a few other things to help him out this bits. year. Yeah, yeah, so. But but so, still, yeah. Like they even like compared to his teammates, though he's killing them. Yeah. Whether or not he, the reason he's got those bits is because he's the guy that deserves them, anyways, mm-hmm. right? That yeah. that's what it comes down to. So that's <laughs> that's all he can say about that, really. Like we're gonna find out who their drivers are sooner or later. Like mm-hmm. there's no real rush. Like I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty confident though that K Mag's safe. Cool, but who knows? But it yeah, came who knows, came but might, might actually want to look at another team, too, right? Because he probably has been, right? It, it, it is. I think Renault is in F one at least for the next. Like they, they, their commitment, they've allocated resources and and they've made a. Yeah, I don't think plan. they're gonna quit and turn no. around. Yeah, they're not they're, gonna quit. They're staying quit here. this year, or next year, or the, or the year after. So they they're a team that's gonna be there for a while. But mm-hmm. for them, it makes more sense to have Ocon there. Uh, so if anything, Ocon might get that seat. And and then mm-hmm. and then Magnussen's seat doesn't seem like it, it seems like it could be in Chicago. Maybe maybe not though, right? So I think that if Magnussen isn't looking at another team right now, like he should start just to have it as as a backup plan. Because Renault, like, could like when are they gonna announce people? He is one of those guys, K Meg. That's 
also embrace the social media type of stuff yeah, that yeah. he's pushing his his personal his life brand. like yeah here's what i'm doing check it out i'm partying here partying there doing some cool stuff look at this car i'm driving mm-hmm. you know, whatever all kinds of stuff in his social media which i don't know it's important whether or not it's gonna keep him his seat i guess we'll find out somebody though who might be switching teams mm-hmm. also or switching sport perhaps who also was fighting for that rental seat is Perez. What do you mean switching sport? He just said this morning that I guess he's giving an ultimatum to to his sponsors. Shit, at the top. I didn't know that. He said that if he doesn't get a solid confirmation this week about 2017 and Formula One, that he's going to start looking in other sports. That he's going to have to start looking to other motorsport. Oh my god! So I don't know where would he, he go. He, he already said back before Canada. That mm-hmm. His dad, remember his his yeah, was holding he, like a Renault. His dad thing. probably got smacked for that. Yeah. <laughs> his dad went out in the media all excited. My son's gonna have a huge announcement in Canada. This was like two weeks before Canada, yeah. two or three weeks that big things are happening. My son's getting big announcement. Never happened, and it never happened since then, right? So yeah, I don't know. That's what he said, though. Anyways, yeah. So. Because he said himself, there's a picture of him holding the Renault sign. He said that he was confident that he's going to be where he wants to be. It's his dream that he's he's confident with his, his team right now. Obviously, they're kicking ass. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's confused. It's gone so so much back and forth. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's what he said, though. I guess we'll find out. There's only when would he go, three days though? left to Sunday, right? Where would he go? I, 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 I see that. WEC or yeah, whatever. What you, whatever what you, right? The WEC is where you go to end your career. If you're an F1 driver. <laughs> yeah, if you're in. There's a cha- yeah, but he wants to race, right? And maybe it's even uncertain whether or not he has a seat at all. That's, like, in, uh, like yeah. he, only he knows, really, right? Yeah. Him and a few and a handful of people really know what's happening. How about Haas? For him? Yeah. For Perez? That might make a lot of sense, too, right? North right? Ameri- pushing North America. I'm sure his sponsors have a lot of interest in America as well as far as pushing their products. Because we've been ta- we've been talking a lot of shit about Mer- or about Honda making a big step next year, mm-hmm. but Ferrari could also make a, mon- a monumental step in, th- in terms of their engine side. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that like Ferrari is like a team in disarray, and like the team, the the works Ferrari team, for them to get back to the top, like it could take them a couple more years while while they get like their whole post the uh, James Allison staff worked out, but their engine like. The, the whole James Allison leaving uh, didn't affect the engine team. The engine right. team has been working for a long time on the 2018 engine already. Mm-hmm. So it could be that, like, maybe Ferrari show him, like, something, like, to be like, yo, our next year's engine is going to kick us. Maybe you want to go to Haas. It was in that as well. The yeah. Eddie Jordan, Bernie Ecclestone interview, it was hinted that uh, as far as I believe – what was hinted this is this is not quoted anywhere this is my what i pulled from it from my own personal (laughs) interpretation of what i read (laughs) was that ferrari though in the interest of formula one as a whole ferrari got some technologies from mercedes as well as perhaps one other team to help them compete in in the series because mercedes got a jump on the other teams started kicking ass yeah. early but that mercedes in the interest of keeping formula one mm-hmm. not to be completely like triple la- like mercedes triple laps everyone mm. gave or sold to ferrari and one other team some other technology like one other manufacturer yeah just to allow them to compete a bit perhaps that jet ignition because that was in the news like when yeah. do you see yeah. some some kind of turbine jet ignition which is like the top end secret of the technology like this is probably the most advanced thing one of the most advanced individual technologies in the whole engine yeah as, which is itself a crazy technology anyways just the speculation odd could be man rumor why Wait, not? Just, yeah, just because like that, that is the people here, are here's not, the not thing watching. They need to sell Mercedeses, right? Here, They're here, selling like vans and SUVs on the side as well. People want to like. Well, here's where that where that argument comes them. from, and, and where a lot of people like say that that could not be like that, that can be something that's not completely unfounded is because yeah. this kind of stuff happens already in like the real world of like automotive 
like manufacturing. These, the big auto companies get together sometimes and they say, you know what, for the benefit of the industry as Into a everyone. whole, yeah. standardizing things. Yeah, let's let's open up this this piece of technology for everybody to use or o something. OBDs, yeah. onboard diagnostic computers, that is, there was a first, second, and third generation. I think it's cars have sort of evolved beyond that now, mm. but that was a common thing for cars. Like, yeah, a million things. They yeah, can or, share, share parts and... Yeah, cut and down on manufacturing, shipping. Exactly. Yeah, and the, the more people that Emissions. are using these like the, these little bits, the more that like the cheaper they become because in mass production and all that. For everyone. Yeah. Now the other advantage of and I and I think that what you're saying could make enormous sense because turbojet ignition is one of the things that in in the scale of the things that you can switch around in your engine to make it go like to make to to increase the performance. TJI but, is probably one of the easiest things to implement, maybe because it's, it's 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 just as far as like tuners and people who like to soup up their cars, it's like a, a bolt on. Yeah, there's something you can just stick it on. You don't have to do any extra tuning or adjusting. You just kind of like it, you do, of course. But yeah, but as far as I've won, it's more of a almost like a bolt on. It's it's not it's not like like separating the compressor and and the turbine from the turbo yeah. like that would change everything. Yeah. You have to like redesign the whole engine as opposed to just whatever that little chamber. Uh, turbo jet ignition. If some if people are um, if if anybody's still wondering or if, if you um, if you're just got in, into the sport, we did actually a sh uh, we talked at l we did a, lar length. a large segment going back. Uh, you can, you yeah, can find that a, on a few podcasts ago. But it, essentially, what it is is that it adds instead of all the combustion happening is spent uh, in in the in the piston in the chamber. There's kind of like a pre-chamber where pre-ignition. Yeah, too. yeah, and then shoots the hot fire out into the piston so that there's more of an even um, even combustion inside the main chamber, and that gives you performance. Right. Yeah. Correct. Or or it gives you more bang per gas. Yeah. More yeah. efficient. More <laughs> yeah. efficiency. More power from the same fuel. Yeah. You need you need though you need to it goes hand in hand you have to work with your uh, fuel supplier to imp to fully implement that because it, little changes that you can do to the fuel uh, would go a long way and that is um, part of like at the beginning of the year um, Ferrari for example was saying like hey we we may have like gotten like you know a, a tenth of a second just in fuel like in, in the in the new fuel like the, the new fuel might have given us a tenth of a second is because because of uh, developments like this but again i don't think that's a bad thing i think that the more that the teams share mm -hmm. the, the better and honestly if i was given like full reign of of the fia for example i'd say to hell with it let's make all of the engine specifications like anything that you do it has to be open like you, you know what I mean? Like all of your specs, at least like like you know like do away with all the secrecy and shit. Just be like you know what you you're gonna come to F one with a new development with a new technology. Open it, open it for everybody, cause not just not just for other people in the sport, but open it to the world at large. Let's see let let's people like let people see what you're doing, and that could only be good for the sport. Honestly, like I've I've given this a lot of thought, and like I think that. Like a, a good way to get rid of like these like crazy competitive advantages that some teams have over over another like could be just that could be if you're bringing a new engine a new part a new whatever to F1 you have to put the specifications up for everybody to see what does that do like if somebody comes up with something revolutionary and and completely new and whatever then the other teams can copy it or can do like their own version of it and thus like not letting anybody have like a massive advantage over another and it would also in a way like after a while after everybody stops crying it would drive innovation mm -hmm. and it would drive because then you'd have to like you'd be forced to like think outside the box i don't know i think it still leaves the teams with the most amount of money to they're still going to be ahead yeah, but right. not but not by much, perhaps. Maybe not. Not I, not I'm like not, out of not reach. Yeah, not yeah. not the way that Mercedes has been dominating, for example. Yeah, yeah. But, but do it, you think that Mercedes dominance is just based on not just their car, but their drivers, their the work that they put well, everything, the right? It can't. Right? No, yeah, their front su front suspension. Yeah, if anyone's suspension. interested in that, we did a little special on that too. They've been doing some sort of uh, freaky, freaky type stuff, but that's too much to talk about again now. 
Uh, what, one of the things that uh, one of our listeners asked that Vince, he said, is, uh, he asked if, if Magnuson is still connected with McLaren because he might get Alonso's seat if, if Alonso decides to retire. Um, on that, I don't think uh, uh, Magnuson is tied to to McLaren at all. Like They broke those ties very harshly, remember? On yeah. his birthday, they, 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 they sacked him. But... but um, I I heard this from Joe Sayward's uh, podcast. That podcast, if if mm-hmm. uh, if you're listening to us clearly, you're li- you're into podcasts. There is a very very good podcast that Joe Sayward does every once in a while, like every like three or four months, with uh, the the people from Side Podcast. It's, uh, if you go to sidepodcast.com, you'll find it there. It's called An Aside with Joe. And even though I fucking I don't agree with everything that Joe Sayward says, and I think that like he, he talks a lot of shit a lot of the time, or like, and it's very like oh Britain, oh British teams, but um, what he what he had to say about this is that the way that 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 uh, Jensen Button decided to retire, but by still like having that association with um, uh, with McLaren is precisely that. It's precisely just in case Alonso. Next year he goes like he does two races and decides fuck this you guys did not deliver on what I like you guys are not he mentions every second race he's like yeah. oh you know maybe if I'm having fun then I stick around exactly like, so yeah so in case on. Alonso next year decides that he doesn't like the car then they'll have button there yeah yeah so I guess I don't know we're almost almost wrapped up here I guess yeah. with the uh, some rule changes this week were proposed oh, yeah. and have been confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. But just, just before, one more quick one here for this weekend, Pirelli. Mm-hmm. We mentioned, I think going back to Hungary, Pirelli was testing in the free practice with a few teams, some unmarked black tires that uh, they didn't really say what they were, anything. They just asked the teams to drive them, see what they thought, give comments, and gather some data. But the idea was from Malaysia to the end of the season to change the back tires. And this is coming off of the danger, the spaghetti, spaghetti tire when (laughs) it's tires, a few tires have just exploded. Yeah. In in Austria. Yeah. (laughs) And the, the complaints from the teams about Pirelli raising the P the minimum PSIs on, on these current tires Mm -hmm. because they don't get as much grip and the, 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 the whole profile of the tire on the, on the car is different. The changing of the tires for this race required unanimous approval from all the teams, which didn't happen. Mm. But for this race, for Malaysia, Pirelli has put out the guidelines for pressure. 21.5 PSI for the front, which is the same as it's been, which is high for F1, but 18.5 in the rear. So what the speculation is from a bunch of the teams and people in the paddock on the news, et cetera, is that Pirelli went ahead and changed the construction anyways without the consent and just did it. Oh, Pirelli, at the end of the day, they're concerned about their reputation, yeah. making sure their tires look good because they want mm-hmm. you to put them on your Honda Civic or your your minivan or whatever. And, and safety. For, yeah, for their safety, but that's their image. If somebody gets hurt on a Pirelli tire, mm-hmm. that, on Monday they sell less of them, right? So it was unspecified, no details, no source on this, secret source. But apparently one or two of the teams had secretly taken one or two of these tires off of their rims. Uh, and just performed their own tests on it? No, they hung them on a scale uh. and, and weighed them. And th- to clarify too, these tires are changed in the construction, not the tread. The tread is exactly the same. Right. The tread... Hasn't changed. It's the exact so it's, same. It's a construction. It's a construction, not the compound. No, yeah, not the compound, not the tread, not the width, not mm-hmm. the stickiness, not the, yeah, not the chemist, the chemistry. It's basically the sidewall and how the sidewall connects to the tr- is connected to the tread as uh, the structure, the engineering of it. Apparently, these new tires, anyways, are 50 grams heavier. Oh each, yeah. Each, each yeah. So this is what one team discovered, and this is where the. Uh, the accusations come mm-hmm. in so who knows but whatever if it gives better racing then uh, i'm not gonna be bad, mad at them for breaking the rules right no of course but speaking Vince of rules Labera says yeah what are the rule changes the rule changes for 27 there's a couple for 2018 already proposed but for 2017 number one pirelli to mandate tire selection for first five races oh, this is by the way courtesy of uh tobias gruner to- yes, i should have mentioned that yeah. sorry tobias gruner our pal 
yeah. dropping all kinds of inside knowledge all the time. I don't know where he gets these sources from. Michael Schmidt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> word, word, Michael Schmidt doesn't like to use Twitter. Yeah, no. <laughs> he doesn't know what Twitter is. <laughs> hey, Toby, tweet this. Number one, I'm going to read this word for word from, from, from his tweet. So anyway, per, for the first five races, because everyone's coming in brand new cars, fighter tires, new rules, new construction, new weights, more fuel, all kinds of stuff. Pirelli will mandate tire selection for the first five races, two of the hardest, four of the medium, seven of the softest, not meaning hard, medium, and soft, but whatever the out of the five are selected for that weekend. We're yeah. still going with at least five, five, five compounds, yeah. perhaps six. There's still room for that to happen. Mm -hmm. The first FP1 tire set may be used longer than 40 minutes if there is a stoppage in the sec in the session. So this is uh, the, uh, during fr first practice one. This they introduced that last year. This, just, this, this sorry, year. this year this to, to make sure an that, expansion on this year's rule. Yeah, to make mm. sure that there's still so, that some cars are on the track at the beginning of practice. There's a there's a there's an extra set of tires that teams are given. They can only use that for the first 40 minutes. Of the first practice. Of the first practice, and okay. then they have to give it back to Pirelli. So now, if somebody crashes their car and they and there's a red flag uh, at the beginning of FP1, they'll extend that period, basically. Okay. Just just to make sure there's some running in, F1, in FP1. There's been some clarifications to the engine rules. New engine rules to prevent stockpiling of power unit elements, like Hamilton did in Spa. You just took like fifty places of penalty, whatever, and yeah, and, it, and piled it, up three engines in the back in the back of his. Well, it, it might be worth to, like, to explain how how he did that. Like, so what he did was basically just bring him in throughout the week, like just put a new engine. Then like they took it out, and then they put another engine, right? But what they did was the team wasn't sure whether or not they were going to risk running his engine that they knew was might not finish the race. Yeah, the one that he was running the previous races, and they had found this loophole. And they brought an extra, mm -hmm. extra couple to Spa. So he ran the first engine in, in practice, went into the pits. They took the car apart and replaced the full engine mm -hmm. with a new engine. He went out and ran it just a little bit. This, an, this is engine number two. Number two. He ran that engine, which everyone assumed, like, oh, his first one is blown. That's garbage now. Yeah. He's going to race this till the end of the season. He just went out and ran it, kind of warmed it up, parked. They took the whole car apart just to do that. So he got the penalties? Is that got that engine on the paperwork that said that it's been used for this weekend. That's yeah. part of his yeah. his 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 Roster arsenal of engines, yeah, his yeah. arsenal of weaponry. Then he put in a third engine, the garage, and he raced on that, leaving him two engines which are brand new. Mm. That he, if when he uses it next time, he's not gonna get any penalties because he he already got those penalties in spot. And he's oh, got a third I engine. Stacked them. Yeah. yeah. And he's got a third engine that oh, they can save crafty. maybe for testing some other parts, but it can still be run. It hasn't been scrapped yet. Okay. So he's got those stockpiled. They went around. They went around the loop a lot. Yeah. yeah. So they've closed that loop. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly. I, I don't wanna. I don't want to say and be wrong, but I think what do you something mean, no? like Alonso with this weekend with his Honda engine, I think they're saving his other one still yeah, maybe. to be used again yeah. under, some, right, under the same Let's speculate. Same That's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're we're going to find out tomorrow at practice, but yeah. uh, Tonight. whether or not that's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, next one. New procedure for standing start in the wet after first laps behind safety car. So this year that was you can't start in the rain anymore from a standing start, but now they're gonna do cars starting and cars starting from the pit lane have to return to the pit lane for that standing start, but they're still going to drive around with the safety car maybe mm -hmm. one two three times as many as it takes to throw the water off the track as much as possible. So yeah. there's no standing uh, okay. water, there's no puddles, right. no rivers, on. The tracks that had need to be resurfaced. So what's different in that? Before, uh, what they would have done is they they have the cars running behind the safety car, yeah. And then at one point they'll just they would pull the safety car uh, in, and the race continued in sort of that order. So you got you got that anti climax right. where like you didn't see people like rushing to the first corner. Uh, no, what they're doing now is like yeah. So if, if there is a grain and like there's a stoppage, whatever, they will bring the safety car will bring them all back. They'll line up on the grid and like start as if it was like the start of mm. the race. So that like it's it's just it will be more exciting because okay. no, I don't think that's I think this is just for the start of the race. Yeah, for the start of the race. Yeah, 
Yeah. Not during the race. Yeah, no, not during the race. For the start. They'll just continue. Yeah, yeah. Just continue. yeah, for the start. But but, but it's 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 important because uh, yeah. I forget which race it was that we lost all that all that the build up ga- like the gaps. All, in, yeah. 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 Rule number five. This is retarded. Driver is given official permission to change helmet livery design for one event per season. Get the hell out of here, man. This this rule was only, was made because of Fettel. He used to come every race with a toy. He had uh, hired artists, badasses to paint. He had some wicked helmets. And it's the, whatever, a million helmets. Not allowed anymore, so you can bring one. Come on. So they, they, they do this because... Uh, Bernie at least upset. Well, I'll, all the drivers like to do like something different uh, with their helmet for Monaco. It usually was like show up to Monaco with like just a different helmet design of some sort. Mm. But uh, yeah, since Vettel kept changing his helmet all the time, they said, oh, that, that's got to stop. So now they're, they're only allowed to like, th- they have to have like a one main helmet design and they have to stick to it more or less. Vettel had some yeah. badass ones, man. He had specific ones to certain countries, to certain yeah. circuits where <clears throat> a couple of the night races, he showed up with glitter helmets. It looked amazing in the he, under the lights he, he actually oh wait no it was it uh i'm talking uh, like Vern at one point like he showed up to uh or no it, it was vettel I, I don't remember exactly um he showed up with leds in his helmet mm. like oh, that cool. yeah <laughs> i think that was vettel yeah. yeah i'm talking like back in his red bull days he used to show up every, yeah there, there's one of them yeah. he used to show up every race with a different helmet until he wasn't allowed anymore yeah so Number six is a clarification of unsafe release violations. No clarification on the details of those violate yeah. those rules. But there's been a couple this year unsafe releases that weren't penalized yeah. just because they fall slightly outside the rules. Like there's one last weekend, I think K May. It doesn't matter. It was. It's not going to happen anymore. Number seven, modified 107% rule for Q2 weather changes to prevent a situation like happened in Hungary. So I guess. I guess if it starts raining and you qualify in a position, but outside the 107%, mm. which They'll would still. have been set in the, if that was set in the dry, you can, uh, you can well, get signed off. The, to, the to probably just like, the stewards would probably just look at, uh, you the know, on, on, on a case by case scenario. Yeah. 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 That's going to be a very subjective type of uh, rule to, to enforce. And the final one, number eight here, is a new signal at the pit lane entry. So I guess they've like, a, like with a, a new kind of flag, a new flag, or here. or some sort of uh, like a like an like actual a, like a traffic light, light. <laughs> a light maybe a, a new signal at the pit lane entry, anyways, to guide the field through the pit lane. So if there's like uh, like the last race, there was a crash right at the start. Mm-hmm. So on the the main pit straight, there's you know pieces of car like broken right. broken pieces, whatever. If that happens, when the safety car comes out, there's gonna be some sort of uh, rules now for them to drive through the pit lane and just avoid the main straight Mm -hmm. if if possible. So they can go around it. And uh, so that's it for for 2017. For 2018, there's three rules proposed. New wind tunnel restrictions. Yeah. That's to drive CFD development. Yeah. Yeah. And that will be to do with the Haas Ferrari thing that happened this past year where there was a huge conflict of interest. We talked about this a lot already. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's never going to happen again. Number two, new rules for CFD development, Mm -hmm. which a lot of teams were asking for, like us, that said, like, hey, Ben, why can't we build a supercomputer? Wind tunnels are expensive to build and run and pull data from. Mm -hmm. You can simulate a lot of stuff just in a a supercomputer, just cheaper to run, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And new tire rules, specifically tire sets of the same spec, maybe mixed in the race wicked so you can put you know like if if you like lock up your front left i guess you can put another of the same compound front left tire uh, as opposed to changing all four or changing all four and that set that sets garbage now yeah so i guess we're gonna see i guess it keeps the cars on track longer shorter pit stop yeah a lot of stuff uh, yeah, that could be interesting too. Yeah. Imagine I was yeah. thinking like during practices and qualifying and just like putting aside your tires for the race you can mix, but cuz r- right now we know they have barcodes on the tires and yeah, somebody yeah, comes yeah. around and makes sure you don't mix the tires, yeah, make yeah. sure you don't change them, make sure you don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Maybe br- make your own tires and put a Pirelli sticker <laughs> on them. <laughs> yeah. You can't do any of that. But it would be interesting to see someone pit like lock up a tire and have the gap to change one tire. I don't know what they do that. Maybe, maybe they might. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, it's maybe like one in, there's a lot of pit stops 
say for a race. A lot of teams well, make I mean, a lot of pit stops, for, say like 50, 60 in a race total, yeah. right? So out of that, at least two or three every race, something happens yeah. where a tire doesn't get on properly. Somebody fumbles. They drop their gun. Somebody's in the way. Unsafe release. Cut down on that, right? Yeah. And the second specification is fitted tires may not be used on a test rig during an event. Mm. So once the tire is mounted on a rim, you can't test. I guess they, they probably have grip testing machines and load testing machines and mm. stuff like that. None of that's allowed anymore because I'm sure probably like two teams have that or whatever. Yeah. Like the really, really good team. Like, like Ferrari, probably Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes, yeah. yeah. And those are the teams that were... They changed the rules mid-season about they had those tricks about like heating up the tires or, yeah. or, like, or like whatever to to fake a, a psi and then <clears throat> when the temperature adjusted to race temperature it was lower yeah. than when it was measured by the fia <laughs> and, and per, the pirelli specialists mm. there's a lot of that was a mouthful cool but yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff that those rules that you don't really you, you you do notice them like in front but they're not like um i don't know what the word is like they change the game a lot for sure yeah but yeah. there are a lot of very minute, minute things that yeah they're kind of like almost cheating this year but <laughs> at the same time like when people make those air quotes again cheats like like the, the mercedes tire pressure thing or etc yeah. etc et i laugh it's great like <laughs> like cool man they found they've, that's yeah, the rules right that's, yeah there's they're still playing within the rules i've said this quote a million times i love it in racing it's not cheating if you don't get caught that's kind of a yeah from carting on up <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's the saying yeah, try, uh, uh i guess one more uh, one thing before we close it up this weekend we are yet again doing betty's. f1 at betty's in the new redesign of betty's uh um so yeah we will be again hosting the race if you are anywhere near toronto we do encourage you to come out betty's is just at king and sherborne downtown uh great place we've had a, a good consistent amount of guys that show up as well as every week we see new faces coming in the renovations uh, are, are pretty good actually. yeah we we have two big screens going on with either like the, the race and some uh race information like live timing going off at first but it's seems to be working better actually oh yeah 100 percent, man it was it's great it's great fun if you don't mind just staying out of the f1 news until you see it because it's in the afternoon so we don't show it live we show it on a delay uh this weekend is going to be a pre-show we're going to start at around three o'clock in, uh, in the afternoon and then the race uh, at around four uh come up and we have uh, half, half off half half price off uh, nachos and wings i must say though i believe my grandma's turning 80 and my depending on timing i might not be able to make this one unfortunately oh, pretty yeah. disappointed we'll have myself. a drink <laughs> oh yeah we'll cheer. I'll, I'll, I'll cheers towards towards the bar <laughs> back here anyways special thanks to lance stroll yeah. his manager and uh tim moraney thanks for the encouragement and uh see you guys next week see you next week see you or, or, th or this or this week hopefully i'll see you sunday i hope so, I hope so. oh you'll make it <laughs> that's, that's the that's the plan <laughs> see you guys thank you mike <laughs>